Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yes, I am live. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello to my VOD people, because you're probably the ones hearing this part of the show. Um, I have appreciated the comments. I actually went through and replied to everything from like the last month. Um, some of the ones that are just nice and, uh, you know, aren't, aren't pointing out anything specific. Uh, obviously I'll just heart them or like them or, or put the thumbs up or whatever. Um, for the more critical ones, I, I do try to reply, uh, not, you know, with the intention of going into some like deep back and forth, but, um, you know, say where I agree, say where I disagree and why. And, uh, yeah, I went through and did all those, um, for today's stream. We, I, I, I was going to watch this video no matter what, and I figured it's been uh, maybe two or three days since I last went live. So, you know, if I'm going to watch the video anyways, I figure I'll just do it live with you guys. Um, we'll talk a bit more about this in a second, but uh, with the job that I am starting uh, actually tomorrow, um, I don't know how much time I'll have to you know, be prepping some big, you know, review document or whatever. So I'm trying to get better at, you know, if I'm going to watch a video that you guys are probably going to watch as well, uh, just trying to go live and stream that or set it aside for when I have time and energy to stream and stream it. Um, you know, because I, I don't know how many opportunities I'll have. I don't know how much time the the job that I'm starting will take. I'm going to try to do a really, really, really good uh, job the first month uh, to kind of uh, justify my being added to the team and whatever and try to learn a lot about the company and procedures and how I can help with stuff. Uh, it is a startup, so I fully expect that I'll be jumping in wherever I can to help, uh, you know, beyond just what my title or my job description would be. So in order to do that, it's probably going to take a bunch of my time. I do want to continue doing the things that, uh, you know, I am happy to do, like, uh, for instance, I have finished the second book in the Dune Trilogy series that I bought quite a while ago, and I'm very, very happy about that. The second book in the Dune Trilogy, uh, I know there's more than just the trilogy, but that's the book that I have. Um, man, is it really, really good. It picks up the pace hella quick. Like, it, it reminds me of watching Game of Thrones. Like, I just want to keep going and going and going because we keep living on, like, such big cliffhangers every single chapter. Uh, it is completely different from the first book, which I have heard and I read recently on Twitter um, from, I think, this guy named Brandon, uh, Brandon Green or something like that. He does a bunch of book reviews and stuff like that, and now he's getting into manga reviews and, and uh, you know, he, he basically, he reads a lot. And he was saying, you know, hey, if you read the first book in the Dune series and that's what made you put it down, I would highly recommend that you just keep reading on book two. Uh, the author, I know, has said that the way that he designed the series is meant to be like sex or like coitus. It's supposed to kind of start off slow or whatever, pick up the pace a ton, get really, really crazy, and then bam, it's over. Uh, I am definitely in the crazy period of this book series because holy shit is a lot happening all at once, super duper quick. And we're like time skipping and like, Jesus, everything is happening at once. It feels very, very, very rushed, but I'm loving it. It's a very fun reading experience. So doing stuff like that, you know, I don't know how it's going to balance with work and stream and whatever. I will make an effort to keep streaming and, uh, yeah, hell yeah. Book smart stream. Now we are talking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to look for every opportunity to go live and hang out with you guys. If this video ends up being trash and I have a shitty attitude and whatever, I will, uh, I will go ahead and, you know, make a course correction or, uh, you know, uh, turn off the stream. I think what sucks is like trying to power through a, a video and you guys are like not digging it because I'm not bringing like good energy to it. And that, that has been in a lot of the comments that I've been reading and it is something I know, but it's good to be reminded of it so that I go ahead and, uh, you know, try to improve upon that and, uh, make sure I have that at the forefront of my mind when I'm, uh, you know, doing these. Cause I, I want to make an enjoyable sp experience for you guys. If I'm not enjoying it and you're not enjoying it, then there's no point of doing it. Right. So that's where I'm at currently, uh, just changing the YouTube thumbnail here for the video, uh, cause I did briefly make one, 
um, these little value adds are going to be a lot easier if I, uh, cause I'm in a probationary period for this job for the month. And at the end of the month, we'll kind of, uh, see if I, I'm going to be made like a full-time employee. And if I am, um, it'll be very easy to just redirect all the funds that the stream makes directly back into the stream. So paying somebody to do timestamps for me, paying somebody to do live stream thumbnails, uh, video thumbnails, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe also doing some TikToks and whatever. All of that becomes a lot easier to consider when the stream doesn't need to be like a money-making venture. I could just dump all the money that the stream makes back into the stream and live off of the income that I'm making it at work, um, which is a cool change. It is a very cool change. So that's what I'm happy for. That's what I'm looking forward to. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. I'll try to get through all that while I'm live on Twitch. Destiny is, of course, banned on Twitch. So we will end the stream on Twitch after we're done with all that and move on over to YouTube. That is the plan for today, everybody. I will play us out some music while I prep a few other things in the background. And then we'll we'll get back into it. Looking forward to today. I have no idea about this video. I didn't pre-watch it or anything. So, uh, you know, you'll be as surprised as I am by how this conversation goes. It's interesting seeing Brittany in a position where she's allegedly, I guess if the title is to believe, like confronting Steven on a few things, a few changes. Um, we've heard Mr. Girl address it. We've heard Rose Wrist address it. And uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, with her unique approach to talking to people, how Brittany will do the same. That being said, I'll play you guys some music and then we will jump into it. Talk to you in a bit. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Cool to have you. Cool to have you. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to be playing a new track from Picto. I played it once or twice before in the stream, but I'm trying to, you know, bring some new music into the rotation. If you are a musical person or you know a musical person and you think their shit would pop off and you want to have them be the intro music to the stream, get them in touch with me or get in touch with me. You can reach me at booksmarts.twitch at gmail.com or on the Discord, just at me. I'm on there all the time, hanging out in voice chat, playing video games with people, um, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, less rhetorically effective in there, as people who have hung out during the League Discord calls can tell you. Uh, so it's a fun time over on the Discord. If you're ever missing out on book, uh, you can go over there and likely catch me at some point uh, playing video games or hanging out with people. That being said, here is a new track titled Headphones by PictoChat. Enjoy, and then we'll get into the stream. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. And once again, that is Headphones by PictoChat. You can get Picto's information by doing exclamation point Picto in either of the chats. Um, and you can spell that with a O or a zero. Um, I believe they spell it with an O. Um, all right. So I think we should be good to go. I checked that we're live everywhere. That shouldn't be a problem. So let's get into it. As a reminder, Destiny is banned off of Twitch, so unfortunately for the Twitch viewers, we will end the stream at the end of this little segment, kind of giving you a life update, hanging out, chatting with you guys uh, before we jump into the video for today. So if you want to get ahead of the curve, you can move over to the YouTube chat. Uh, you know, as far as YouTube chats go, I think mine is one of the better ones. Uh, they're more human. Uh, so, you know, uh, word to the wise. Uh, I have a few different life things I want to talk about, fun stuff that I'm doing in the background, things I'd like to share with you guys, and uh, I figure I'll get that out of the way so we have something on Twitch for today. Uh, number one is I have been working on the Dune Trilogy. I picked this book up when I was in Norway. It's a very, very beautiful big book, and it would look lovely on a shelf. Very, very pretty. It has the first three books in the series. My understanding is there are more, but this is the main trilogy. I am about this far through. Um, so I have just finished the second book. I'm That's literally where the second book ends. That looks like a lot for book three. Um, book three is massive. It looks like it's as big as the first two. And uh, if book three continues to be paced the same way book two was, where it's really crazy and shit is happening every single chapter and, you know, none of it feels like it's dragging the way the first book does a little bit, um, I'm super excited. Uh, honestly, it was tough making the decision to stream this video thing instead of continuing because I, I'm that invested in the story right now. Very, very, very cool. Um, and a lot of the concepts from Dune in terms of like meditation and uh, the different sayings from like the in-world religion and the ways of looking at life and communication and what does it mean to be a human? Uh, you know, I, what separates us from animals? It's kind of the level of control that we have over ourselves and the ability to kind of suppress and repress a lot of animalistic things like emotions and impulse and whatever and the kind of contrast between the characters that do really really good at that like these monk priest type people that can control every muscle in their body and they have a, a kind of superpower they can use where they uh add a kind of tone or a fluctuation to their voice depending on who they're talking to it to like hijack their brain and make them do whatever they're asking them to do. These ideas of the control of the body is what separates humans from animals. And then you contrast that with more like the villains in the story and they're very animalistic. They give into all their urges and they eat a ton of food. So they're fat as fuck to the point where like they need like anti-gravity 
suspenser technology to lift their body up and to hobble around because they can't walk on their own. Um, all of that, all of the themes in Dune, uh, all of these political ideas of saying one thing while meaning another, and there's a lot of thought that goes into everything that people say and the characters are interpreting that. So somebody that's really mature, you can see how they're kind of balancing their emotions versus what they're trying to accomplish out of a conversation and their ability to kind of put those emotions down while trying to, you know, fulfill whatever objective or thing they're trying to do with their conversations as a person that talks a lot about communication that's really interesting to me i think words and language are a special power that humans have that we kind of don't think about that way a lot but it's really incredible that just by me talking i'm able to use this framework of language to draw in your mind a bunch of images and ideas and feelings and things like that and if you took that into a sci-fi context how far could you go with that in terms of like controlling the minds or influencing the minds of other people all that is wonderful all that's super interesting i love dune so i've been working on that that's been very fun i love sinking hours into reading it's not something i've been able to do a lot since streaming but I'm kind of getting back into all that to kind of like up my brain processing power in preparation for this job. That's also included reading a lot more psychological literature. Um, in case you didn't know, I used to be an essay writer, so I would help graduate students write and edit and uh, get their theses through the different review processes you go through as a graduate student. It can be really tough to navigate, especially if you're not a strong writer. So lots of people needed help with that. And that's what I used to do before I did streaming. And um, uh, a lot of my personal focus, like if I got a, a psychology project, I would always try to focus on this, would be education and how does cognitive science play into education so kind of like the science of learning how do we hold on to memories how do we form them um you know and then dipping into how that overlaps with other fields like neuropsychology so uh you know if you understand the way the neurons are working in the brain and what the different hemispheres do how can you use that knowledge to better inform good ways of studying or learning or forming memories and how do you understand damage that's done to those parts of the brain so if somebody has some kind of injury it, it impacts some of their cognitive abilities or their physical abilities um, all that's really really interesting to me and so i've been dipping back into that and getting updated on things like depression and adhd and learning uh, and cognitive science that's been really really fun I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, so kind of just a return to form for me, because uh, that's what I spent a lot of my time doing before is just reading every day and doing research and uh, writing on these topics at like a fairly high level. And uh, it feels good, man. It feels good. Um, you know, I I've talked before on stream about how like this job that I'm doing now with you guys in streaming uh it's not something I feel like what uses um, what is that? those abilities that I had. Thank you for the sub. I do appreciate that. Let's hear what you have to say. I first. love me some smarts talking about interests. <laughs> well, I'm happy you like it because I definitely like talking about it. And I just don't do it a lot because my assumption is you guys really want drama and, you know, the debate reviews and kind of the money reflects that. But as I kind of move away from needing money from streaming, um, you know, I think that stuff will only be to benefit other kinds of content we're doing. So if I do some kind of stream that's reviewing Mr. Girl or something like that, uh, the money that I get from that will hopefully just go back into the stream again assuming this job thing works out and um yeah and that'll be a good position to be in because there are lots of things where i would really like to pay people from the community to do them for me to guarantee that we have a certain level of content and a certain value behind everything that we do like doing timestamps or uh, getting everything that i do posted to the patreon or uh, helping me produce content by doing some research for stories we're doing mr thick if you're listening i will respond to your thing i just wanted to wait till after i started work uh to let you you know how your your particular story you've been working on would fit into the stream if at all um but uh yeah you know it'll be cool to kind of go back to that um and i think you guys will be the beneficiary of that because you'll see that we're more consistently hitting those marks and uh you know um one tough thing uh and i believe there's a concept for this is this idea that like 
when you go from one employee to three or five or it's something like that, the way that you look at the business and you run it completely changes. And when you go from five to, I think it's like eight or 15 or something like that, it changes again and so on and so forth as you get more people helping on projects. Um, I don't really enjoy being at the part where you're one person because you're just super limited. The way that my brain thinks is like all the different tasks that I could be having somebody else do while performing the high value task, which would be streaming and really limiting my time spent to like that high value task. And that'll be a lot easier to do when the majority of the streaming revenue is just going to go back into the stream because then I don't have to do that other stuff. And then we're looking at more of like a three to five person operation. And uh, that's definitely somewhere where I'm like more comfortable and I, I deliver better. Um, so that's the hope there. Um, we'll, we'll see how all that works out again. I'm in a probationary period at work right now. I'll talk with you guys more about what that job is and what we're doing uh, at that startup, um, you know, after I know it's a for sure thing and all the contract paperwork is signed and that's a for sure thing. In this next month, I'll kind of try to keep it on the down low while I focus on really proving to them that I would be a valuable member of the team and making sure that at the end of this month probationary period, they'll review everything that I'm doing and be like, yeah, sure, that works out. We'd be happy to have you on as a full-time member. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. I've also been watching House of the Dragon. In case you guys didn't know, there's a new Game of Thrones series out on HBO, and the first episode is up for free on YouTube. So even if you're not a pirate and you don't want to pay for HBO, uh, you can get it for free on YouTube. Uh, use a VPN, change your shit to say that you're in the US, and that will be free and available to you. Very, very strong first episode, in my opinion. I really liked it. Uh, they're up to episode three now, so you can catch up to it in three hours, and then you'll be up to date for every uh, you know weekly release, and you can read the Reddit and uh, you know uh, see the YouTubers talk about it. My personal favorite is Alt Shift X. Uh, they're a YouTuber that basically does a breakdown of every single episode and talks about how does this relate to the book stories? Where is it changing? Where is it not? Here's my opinion. Here are the themes and messages I think are being conveyed. There's a lot of stuff that I miss that I then kind of supplement with their understanding in their videos. They also do a Q&A session at the end of every single episode drop where they'll take questions from the audience and kind of form those ideas that you'll see in the final product of a video. I really like that setup. And that might be what we kind of move to do with reviews, where maybe the first viewing or something like that, or the second viewing, I'll do live on Twitch and YouTube. And then I'll focus my efforts into like a too long didn't watch video for the people that aren't about VODs or live streams. And then that will go live on the channel. I think that's like a good rhythm or like breaking up of the content. Um, so there's that. House of the Dragons, very, very good. I like it. Um, kind of getting weaker and more Game of Thronesy. We're like, oh, we're working up to a cliffhanger every single episode, but you know, first episode's really strong. Um, yeah, uh, I guess to, to clear up the job thing again, I start tomorrow. That'll be my first day. I'll do all my onboarding stuff. Uh, the next day, I'll I'll be doing meetings and whatever, and uh, you know, really focusing on doing that stuff. But I'll try to keep it on the down low again until everything is all settled there, um, which will be done in time for TwitchCon. In case you didn't know, next month is TwitchCon. Uh, that is, I believe, the current goal that we have up here. That will help me offset the costs for going to the U.S. and paying for our Airbnb and the cost for the tickets. Um, so if you'd like to help out the channel, if you like the content, uh, I would definitely appreciate the support. It'll go towards all those expenses because I will be flying from Romania back home to the States to do that. Um, and uh, I'm sure I'm really important, would very much appreciate uh, the contributions because I'm paying him for the Airbnb and stuff. I'll be staying with him and Wicked Supreme. Um, I I think we're staying with one other person. Is it irrelevant? I don't really know. I don't really remember. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that. That'll be fun. I'll try to make content out of it and whatever. Uh, maybe a YouTube video with all the kind of off stream footage that I take on my phone and that'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, that's at the end of the month. It'll coincide really well with the end of my probationary period. So while I'm in California, I'll be able to make the decision, hey, if I got this job, 
I could live in California. I could definitely afford it. So I'll be able to start my life again. That's where I left off, you know, in terms of being an adult, uh, was trying to live in California and make enough money to live by my parents and stuff. Uh, so that'll be cool. Lots, lots going on at the end of this month, a lot of life changing things. So, uh, if I seem super introspective near the end of this month, you know why it is. Cause I'll really be thinking about what that looks like for me and what I'm going to do. Um, we have to give Booksmart's money so that he can visit his friends or he'll be trapped alone in Romania and probably get human trafficked because he's cute. Thanks. Brittany like, likes anal. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I love hearing more about what you like, book, even your anime reviews and thoughts. Well, we'll be getting more of that because I'll, I'll try to keep this as something that's enjoyable for me. And so that'll mean... Um, you know, doing more of that. Delegation is the only skill that matters as far as I've discovered professionally. Yeah, it's a good skill to have. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm also doing some other like freelance work for YouTuber people. And, um, you know, one thing that I've told my friends and one thing that I'm kind of, again, reiterating for like my boss or whatever through doing the YouTuber thing is uh, it's not as simple as you would think to like give people tasks and have them produce the thing that you want. Uh, they can't read your mind. And uh, if you don't pick up the slack as a leader to like make sure that things are clear, whether that's due dates or deliverables or whatever else, or the responsibilities, um, if you don't make that clear as the leader or as the boss, uh, it's very unlikely that the employee is gonna kind of, uh, you know, take up that task and make sure that all that is clear. So that, that, that's one like example of a difficult thing about delegation that you kind of have to learn through experience. And, uh, it's easy to think about it as a person not doing it, but it's much more difficult in practice working with different people. And, um, it's something I learned how to do, I would say, you know, with essay writing and stuff like that. And, um, it's still something I struggle with, even working with the BGG team or whatever else. So it's tough. It's tough. Um, can you give us a hint on what your new job is going to be? Um, basically, it's going to be like content management and user research. So uh, the company is going to be focused on helping creators. And a big reason that I was an attractive candidate to become a part of the company is because uh, if there's one thing I understand really, really well, it's kind of the struggles of small creators, whether you're a streamer or a YouTuber, um, and kind of understanding what are the needs of those people? What are they struggling with? You know, um, I am still a small content creator and I still struggle with a lot of things. And so figuring out how to address that market segment is going to be a huge part of what I'll contribute to the team and, uh, giving that kind of input as a creator at every different level of production is something I'm going to focus on. So tapping into like all the different projects we're working on and giving input on like, Hey, as a creator, maybe this thing isn't as important as this thing, or maybe this feature set will be easier for streamers to navigate than this one. Or like, ah, you know, if we're talking about product A, B, or C, uh, that we'll invest money and time into, A is probably going to be the most appealing to small creators. So that might be something to take into consideration. Um, and then I'll be doing a, wow, holy shit. $99 through the super chat. Thanks for the chat in Discord a few days ago. Good luck. Thanks, dude. I'm I'm happy. Um, Debbio, thanks for the chat in Discord a few days ago. I would assume you're the person I spoke one on one with. Again, if you didn't know, I'm in the Discord quite frequently. So you know, if you hop in the Discord, if you at me, um, if you're in stream discussion talking about the stream, even if you're in the drama chat talking about what's going on in the the streaming world or in the real life world, in, in politics and, uh, you know, geopolitical, whatever. I'm in there all the time. So if you want the opportunity to speak with me about something, uh, that would be the place to do it. And, uh, you know, um, as long as I have the time to give, I'm trying to give it. Again, once I start the job, we'll see. But, uh, you know, for now, I'm just trying to get back. So thank you for that. That's huge. Thank you a ton. And I'm, I'm happy it was uh, worth your money. Um, base donators promoting the Discord. Yeah, I like that. Book, I have a question relating to Destiny's goal with interacting with as many uh, right-leaning influencers. Do you prefer those questions during the discussion? Um, do you prefer those questions during the discussion? 
I just, I don't know what you mean by the discussion. Do you mean like today and in chat or do you mean like in the discord? Uh, the answer to either would probably be, yeah, sure. Um, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we end up focusing on. I haven't pre-watched this, so we may be focusing on like how Brittany is delivering ideas and how she's communicating. We may focus on what Steven's been talking about if there's confusion there and Brittany doesn't understand it. Um, I think a lot of people are struggling because when people focus really hard on something with destiny, I feel like the reason they're focusing really hard is it seems intuitive that the answer would be different from the answer he's giving, or it feels like the answer he's giving now is different than an answer he gave in the past. But Steven kind of sets up his reasoning for why he's doing something in such a way where you're going to have a really difficult time bridging that gap and making that clear what seems like it should be very apparent and like an easy give is not going to be that and you really have to kind of have a conversation on his terms with how he's talking about things because if you don't he'll keep repeating himself on his reasoning behind something and you're probably not going to make progress it's not very often that somebody brings their own argumentation to the table and it's some novel idea that he just immediately has like a shift of heart over and if that shift of heart or mind does happen it tends to be way after the conversation and it likely won't be attributed to anything that you you did. Um, you know, I've seen him make a lot of changes that have been things that like we've talked about on the channel being good things or like I've talked to him personally about. You can look at the year of rhetoric. You can look at the most recent idea that he's going to be moving away from the Twitter arguments and stuff, which I got blasted for uh, by the DGG community, but for optics reasons. Um, uh, you could look at uh, what was the other thing? Um, there's one other thing from recently. Oh, he's making this move to be like more empathic and stuff, right? Like these are all things that we push for. I've been called naive and whatever for suggesting. Um, and it's not something I take personal anymore. I just try to be happy with the results. You know what I mean? Um, there was a time where I would be very personal about it, but at this point, you know, it's just like, I'm just happy that these changes are being made because they're something that I wanted personally to happen as a viewer and as a streamer, uh, you know, long before he, he came to that conclusion. So it's going to be something that happens over time. And if you're not able to make it apparent in your communications with him, maybe some of his real life, you know, uh, experiences will. Um, that all being said, I look forward to seeing how Brittany approaches this. She's very different from, you know, Rose Wrist or Mr. Girl in the way that she communicates. So maybe she'll make more ground. It'll depend on the point she's making and how she makes them and how, again, she interfaces with what Steven is putting forward is his reasoning behind something already. And so we'll see how she contends with that because um, it's just not very often that somebody explains the way they think about something and Steven finds it novel enough to change his mind. Um, yeah, that's that's my TLDR of, you know, my predictions on this. Um, during the video overview, basically. Yeah, sure. I mean, talk about whatever you want, dude. Um, <laughs> if I start getting upset, you'll see what's triggering me, and then I would just advise that you don't do that. But I'm going to try to stay chill for most of the video today. And if I get upset and whatever, just remind me, and I'll try to chill out. Uh, if it gets to be too much, I'll just drop out of the stream. Again, with this new job, it's not super important that I try to, like, get money out of things uh, with the stream and whatever, at least for this month. Again, we'll see if the job continues. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to try to stay chill today. A lot of people need to feel like they came to the conclusion themselves, so you can only plant the seeds with them and hope that shit grows. Sure, sure. Covering Destiny stuff today, folks, head on over to the YouTube. That is true. Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about, um, because I want to kind of correct this. I feel bad for doing it. I shit talk Romania quite a bit. I shit talk the Romanian language quite a bit. Um, but I, I, I want to make clear, like, if a digital nomad, which is a person that works online and works from home and is able to be anywhere in the world as long as they're kind of meeting their expectations at work, whether you're running a business or you're working for uh, a company and working from home or you work on like freelance stuff, uh, you know, if you have that freedom of movement and you're exercising that, um, Romania would probably be the 
one of the top countries that I would recommend that you include in your cycle of moving around. There aren't a lot of people in that situation, but that's increasing as time goes on with the pandemic and the changes to the workforce that that has brought about. Um, when I very first started on this kind of adventure of traveling a lot, uh, Thailand was always the biggest recommendation. That's where a lot of digital nomad people were. Thailand has inclement weather. There are several months out of the year. Uh, for example, up in Chiang Mai, where I lived up in the mountains, um, they would have what's called the burning season. So there isn't super good agricultural infrastructure in Thailand. So when they have all these different like rice husks and other like agricultural waste, there is a period of a few months during the year where they just light it on fire and they just burn it. And so every time you go outside, it's super duper smoky and hard to breathe and polluted and hot. And uh, it's not a very fun time to live there. So a lot of people, even people that live there full time will move during that period, you know. Uh, and that's setting aside the inclement weather. It's very, very hot, very, very, very muggy and humid. Uh, lots and lots of rain during the rainy season. Uh, there's a lot of problems with Thailand, problems that I don't really face in Romania. Uh, Romania has a four to one exchange rate with the dollar. Uh, Thailand has a 35 to one, but four to one is easier for somebody that's kind of math stupid like me to wrap my brain around. So uh, there is that. It's very affordable to live here. Uh, Airbnbs are very nice. You have super fast fiber optic internet in, in Bucharest where I live. Um, you know, you get a three month visa on arrival uh, when you come here. It's not EU uh, in term or it's not Schengen. So the visa is counted differently than the other European countries that you might be traveling to. There's a lot of good reasons to like it here. The people are fine. Um, they're not rude uh, in the service industry the way that they can be really, really rude in Thailand. That can be really jarring to deal with and really difficult if you're having problems. Uh, plenty of people speak English here. Um, there's a lot of reasons to recommend Romania. And as the seasons have been changing, because in the last week or two, it went from pretty hot and muggy every day, and then the rains came, and now it's like so cool outside that I can see my breath. As we're kind of moving into this change from summer into fall, uh, I remember the last time I was here during fall in, in October and November, I think, and um, it's just lovely. It, you know, it's a lovely place. Uh, you know, I'll shit talk it for fun and stuff like that. But I just want to make it clear, like, it would be one of my biggest recommended countries for people that are digital nomads. I think it's something I should clarify and not be as much of a dick about. And I'll, I'll try to kind of correct that moving forward. But yeah, like, I don't run into a lot of problems here. So, you know, I, I think it's a good country. Um, you do you, no shame in backing away when you feel rage coming. Good. I'm happy you think so. A lot of people... Okay, I already read that. Um, yeah, so that all being said, that's basically all of the updates, life stuff, random thoughts that I've had before stream uh, that I wanted to get through. We will now be moving over to the YouTube. So if you're in the Twitch chat, I love you, but Steven is banned. So we can't cover his stuff on Twitch. So if you want to start making that transition over, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do it. You can get the YouTube by doing exclamation point YouTube like Vels has so lovely, lovely Lee done for you in the chat. So go ahead and click on over to there. Uh, the thumbnail should be something that I've created that says live in the top right corner has a picture of Brittany and Destiny and I. Um, and yeah, I look forward to it. Uh, hopefully this is a good video and not trash. We'll read the comments before. I'm sure the comments will tell me it's trash. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> anywho, anywho, anywho. Uh, move on over, Twitch people. Move on over. I'll have a cookie, and by the time I'm done with the cookie, we'll shift, okay? Mm. Cookie. Mm. Mm. Cookie. <coughs> cookie. <coughs> cookie. My cookie. <coughs> oh. 
Oh, that's a hell of a cookie. Mama mia. Oh. Mmm, cookie. Ah, oh, the chocolate's in my teeth. It hurts. Mmm. <laughs> cookie. <laughs> what a roller coaster of emotions that cookie was. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, Twitch people, move over. We've had enough time, okay? I've, I've, I've stalled for as long as I can stall. Stream over, okay? Stream over for the YouTube people. Let me go ahead and turn that off. If it continues to run, that's not my fault. Blame Restream. Go at them on Twitter because their shit's broken, okay? It did that last time where it said the stream was going, but it was just black. So uh, I, I don't care to see how to fix that on my end. Because I don't think there is a way to fix it on my end. There's no way to like close the stream from my stream manager. So I just have to kind of hope that Restream does it for me, uh, which I hope that they do. Anywho, uh, that being said, all done with the Twitch. Solid 40 minutes of content for those people. You can blame Twitch for banning Steven. Um, and uh, we're all done with Twitch. Okay, let me close that up. Oh, so I'm not that Stream over for the Twitch people, not the YouTube people. Yeah, it is. It's over for the Twitch people. Lenny content. Here's some love, Mr. Smarts. Stay safe. Stay frosty. Also, I've never seen someone struggle so much with a cookie. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't know how to eat. You would think for a man my size, of all the things that I could be good at, it would be eating. But, uh, you know, I still struggle. That should be inspirational for some of you that struggle with eating. You know, even a big guy like me struggles with it sometimes all right i'm ready to jump into it if you guys are i most certainly am uh i have an ad on discord so let me make sure that's nothing important that i care about yeah sorry we have two bots and i don't care to resolve it um in the discord that add everybody twice sorry all right let's go ahead and move over to this Bada bing. Hopefully that works first try. It does. Wunderbar. Um, so I do have some notes here. I'll be taking them probably on the side. Um, probably not important that uh, I mentioned that, but whatever. All right. The title of this video is You Changed Destiny. Brittany makes Destiny explain his recent shift. What kind of shift? What change? Well, we're about to find out together. But before that, Let's go ahead and take a look at the comment section and see what they're saying. So, number one comment, although her energy seems contained, you can tell this woman is the embodiment of chaos. Okay. Brittany talking about not being dependent on drugs is hilarious. She gave the most copium answer to her relationship with drugs. Yeah, take breaks so it's better the next time. I, so I don't have context, but this statement on its own is fine. And I think people that do drugs a lot would give you this advice. Uh, you probably should take breaks so that it's better. The people that do back-to-back -back hallucinogenics and stuff, I, I just don't understand it. I was actually talking with like an old like high school friend of mine about this uh, just the other day. Um, like I really, I have a red flag for people that tell me that they like, did acid for like three days in a row or they spent a week like doing shrooms over and over because a it hits a lot less when you do it immediately after and b with something like lsd like if you're taking like a proper dose there is like a hangover period of two days where you feel really weird and philosophical like you woke up from some existential nightmare. Um, so I don't really understand that. And I think it's fair advice that people take breaks so that it hits the right way. Um, I would say you should probably be doing like, at the very least, like three months between taking like LSD and it, I would probably more err on the side of like six months to a year. Um, so no, I think that's fair advice, but hey, maybe there's much context we are missing. I thought you were getting out of there by now. Getting out of where? Yeah, to be more specific. It's actually terrifying how narrow her window of perception is in this conversation. This is like Dunning-Kruger meets unqualified therapist. Well, maybe we'll keep an eye out for that. I mean, if she's missing some of the stuff that Steven is saying, um, 
then maybe we'll point that out. To be fair to her, she only claims to be a really good introvert. She doesn't uh, masquerade under the flag of empathy the way that uh, Mr. Girl does. And, uh, you know, I would say if she did, maybe she's not as good at that. Yo, this was actually really amazing, Destiny. Seriously. Never been a fan, but the second you talked about moral obligation to humanity, I realized that you are seriously doing some in-depth thought and realizing certain things that are very honorable. Much appreciated hearing this from you. I think the real goal is to create a world where things people have passion for and are good are the things that we as a society push people towards the most. I can't imagine considering it a moral imperative, but I do think there is a nobility to it. It's just setting that world up. The world would be a richer place if people pursue their natural talents and their passions. Um... Okay, so between these two, we kind of see where we're going to be focusing on. It's that moral obligation claim from Stephen that, uh, you know, to he who is gifted much, much is expected or whatever. I'm probably butchering that quote. You probably know what I'm talking about. But, you know, it's kind of like the with great power comes great responsibility. He's talked about this with people like AOC and whatever. If you're born as somebody like AOC and you have all this passion and ability to do something, you're probably obligated to try and do those things. If we didn't expect that from people, we might lose out on folks like MLK or Bernie or AOC or whoever else. Um you know, uh, we, we kind of want to push people to live up to whatever it is that they're able to do, because that's how we're going to get really wonderful people to, uh, you know, take accountability uh, for, you know, whatever gifts they've been given. Um, Destiny, try and do positive things that help the world. Brittany, but how does that help me? <laughs> okay. Um, she's misunderstanding what destiny means by impacting the world owe it to the world it's not necessarily the grand scale of every corner of the earth her impacting her local community is impacting the world sure um seems like she's gonna misunderstand a lot of what steven's saying based on the comments so we'll keep an eye out for all of that with the drugs thing i think the commenter is talking about the framing of i take breaks so it feels better not i take breaks because i'm doing it too consistently um i'm sorry i just i don't understand what you're saying um because I, uh, I don't, um, let me try to read this like three different times in three different ways, uh, because it's the order in which you put these items is very strange to try to understand it. I think they're all backwards. Hold on. I, no, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I like, because everything in the beginning is all something that I said. So when you say that, I think the commenter is talking about X and I've been talking about X. I don't really understand. It's framed like an objection, but I don't think that objection is with what I explain. Because then you say not insert new thing Y. And I would like to think that maybe new thing Y is what they meant, not old thing X that I already said. So, but that completely contrasts with the point you seem to be making with the way the sentence is worded. So I'm just confused. I'm just confused. Remember to detox, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, make sure to detox. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Why this particular path, though? You could have done anything else. Why this one? Oh, you're moving away from the hedonism? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. So we're moving away from the hedonism and we're on it. So do you like, are you like hyper aware that like you're in a moment and your life is shifting and you're like, oh my God, I'm making a transition. Um, yeah, it happened a little bit ago, but yeah. How does it feel to be in a transition? I have a prediction about your life, but I don't know if I should say it out loud. Go ahead, do it. Why not? Now that you said that much. Wait, we're to, spoiling. You know I don't want to spoil. Did something, did something happen? <laughs> well, emotionally. Um, pretty good. Is something, did something happen? <laughs> well, wait, why are you asking me that? Did something happen? Well, I don't know. When you ask a question like that, it makes me feel like some shit's going on. Did I miss something? <laughs> um, technically, no. If anything, I feel like I missed something in your life. Which? Where I, 
thing. I don't know. You talked to this guy the other day, Devin or something. Uh huh. It, now it was the cool thing to do to attack Destiny. That was and a they cool took that advantage man. Like even people that I thought were like uh, I, I consider like acquaintances or friends of yours. And many of those people you just referenced literally started their community on the back of it. So when you lend them your original voice, you give them your power. You absolutely can't do that. So here's like the big shift that's happened. About three months ago, if you would ask me what is the purpose of life, I think I really wish this was out without the super duper loud music, but would have said the purpose for your life and over the past few months my mind has kind of shifted a bit into where does that make sense bro uh, yeah, it yeah. makes perfect sense. I mean, i'm completely that it's your voice that's yeah, yeah, yeah pretty cringe but, uh. and you're on this like quasi spiritual journey but also i feel like there's something more interesting happening and i want to talk to you about that possibly interesting thing um sure what's up like well I guess I wanted to ask you, like, are you going through some sort of spiritual journey? Are you getting Devin's hopes up? He seemed really hopeful. So there are, I think there's like broadly two different ways of engaging with the world. Um, in one sense, you've kind of got like this autistic, like, I want to see all the facts and pictures and studies, blah, blah, blah. And this is how I see the world. It's how I like to engage mm -hmm. with the world. Um, but most people that work in or function in like political areas um, tend to have a more narrative view of the world. And I've mm -hmm. always had trouble bridging that gap like if you want to debate me on like women's rights or minorities or slavery or immigration or anything like this like okay well let's dig out the studies and let's get in the facts and figures and i can do that until i'm blue in the face and then some guy opposite me you know will be like my mother was raped and killed by an ms-13 member who was let in by obama's own f official judge or whatever and it's like okay well yeah i lost that argument <laughs> like i guess i guess i lose like thanks dude yeah and then it's like over or like you want to legalize marijuana my daughter was and murdered by a three-time marijuana smoker that got released from federal prison when Colorado legalized marijuana. So, oh, okay, well, done for me. So um, I've, I've been trying to figure out, it's like over the past couple of years, I've been trying to figure out like, okay, I think I said specifically, I think it was in 2020 or might have been 2021, where it's like, I need to be more narrative driven. I need to figure out how to like combine and deliver the things that I'm talking about with narratives. Um, and I'm really bad at doing that because I don't think in narratives usually. I think just like in discrete autistic facts um, rather than like a full story that gives you like context for everything start to finish. And um, as of recently, I got a recommendation from a friend to start reading some stupid Christianity shit. And, um, from C.S. Lewis. Yeah. And in reading yeah. that, I remembered I have a whole background in Catholicism. I went to Catholic school <laughs> for 12 years. I went to Jesuit high yeah. school for four years. I have a pretty fleshed out understanding of Christianity. And, um, I'm, and, and I've grown since then. So since I was like, I don't know if you do this, but you have like your, your rage atheist phase where you're like, F religion, it's all evil and horrible, blah, blah, blah. I get through that in my early 20s, um, mid 20s, late 20s, um, and then especially my early 30s. I'm still in my early mid 30s, I guess. Um, or instead of viewing things as like worse, I try to view them as different. Um, so now kind of reopening that Christianity book, what I can see is like, oh, holy shit. Religion is like the perfect thing to take all of these autistic discrete facts and kind of organize them in a sort of 10 rules for life uh, to allude to the 10 commandments and uh, Dr. Peterson. Um, yeah, so I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm going to go back to the kind of Christianity spiritual stuff that I have. I can scrap the religious part because we don't need the theology, that's garbage. But I can take like all of the kind of like rules and the structures and the context and all of that. And I can kind of like repackage it into this like secular understanding of the world that still like is very human because like data and figures and studies and discrete facts is a very inhuman engagement with the world but like stories and narratives and allegories and religion and and tradition and all this are very human ways of engaging the world so that's kind of been like what i've been trying to combine over the past like month or two and then that's ended up coming out in like my little red pill debates kind of yeah sorry there's that, that whole thing i uh like passionate destiny this is always fun uh why why okay obviously we're bubble hopping right now like that's what you're doing right you're like bubble hopping you're like hopping in fresh and fits world and then you're hopping mm -hmm. into abba's world and you're hopping in your world and you're now you're going to the christian bubble and you're using their which i love that's why i watch so much anime i just feel like stories tell so many good like they challenge you in different ways okay mm -hmm. love the bible grew up catholic like you did right right mm -hmm. why this particular path though you could have done anything else why this one um, I just happened to make a friend who is f***ing religious and they recommended me dumb shit and I don't read, I shouldn't say dumb shit, they recommended me C.S. Lewis and I need to read more and I haven't been. So I'm like, okay, f*** yeah. it, like I'll start reading this. Um, and then it just, yeah. And then it, and then the, like, if I would have grown up like Muslim, I probably would have gone on the Muslim spiritual arc, <laughs> I guess. But um, because I'd grown up Catholic, it was so easy for me to reconnect with all the stuff that I already kind of like knew from the past. Like, oh shit, like this is a really easy transition and it's like super applicable to my current like political challenges, yeah. And to be fair, you're not becoming religious. You're just using religion's tools. To no, sort it would of take a push. radical reshaping of my mind to ever become religious again. But I can see okay. the value in it, of course. So yeah. Okay. Now I heard you also mention possibly doing something like um, like a news organization or a collective or something. How bored or how quick do you think you'll? you'll get bored with it all. Like, I just feel like you're gonna get bored. Um, Is that just me? Am no, I no, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of like dynamic stuff involved in like running big stuff. Um, but but is I, it running the business or your legacy that's cool and important or is it actually like the work you're doing? The, I think the work part. I think that I can, I think there are unique things that I can contribute to the world and I think that I should explore those more rather than just doing video games all day. That's kind of what I'm. Oh, you're moving away from the hedonism? Yes, hmm. yeah, that. 
So we're moving away from the hedonism and we're on it. So do you like, are you like hyper aware that like you're in a moment and your life is shifting and you're like, oh my God, I'm making a transition? Um, yeah, it happened a little bit ago, but yeah. How does it feel to be in a transition? Um, good. I always like transitions. Um, I've always said that I'd be like really scared if I've like aged five years. So uh, just to explain to you what I'll be doing on the screen, and if you have input on the way it's laid out, let me know because I I'm not married to this setup. I kind of don't like it. Um, when I'm doing a play by play, and I'm taking notes for that. I try not to take notes on every single shift in the conversation that happens. I'll only do that if I have a transcript on the side of me with timestamps, because then I can have the play by play have links to all these timestamp sections. And then that's helpful to me because it's essentially a cliff notes version of the transcript without the transcript there already in my note taking program. This is generally how I'll do it is I will keep track of pivot points. So like important places where the conversation is changing. Um, when I would tutor essay writing, uh, a huge thing that I would teach people in early into our sessions is how to annotate something. Annotating is when you are physically interacting with the text by chunking it, taking notes, probably in the margins, highlighting, these sorts of things, and teaching people how to engage with a text or with a piece of media in such a way where you can break it down into understandable or important parts. And that's going to depend a lot on what your purpose is. My purpose doing the stream and stuff is to talk about where we run into problems with communication, where we're kind of missing each other, right? Um, what are the big ideas that are clashing here? So for me, given that purpose, I want to take notes of parts that are highlighting that purpose. So anytime we make a shift that is that I think will be important or gives me some indication of where the person's brain at. So right now, when Brittany is feeling out the conversation, it's not really important. I'm going to wait till we hit something where like she has a problem with it and we're going deep into it. And where does that problem start and what is it? We're hearing bits of it. Like when she mentions us, oh, so you're giving up on hedonism. That might be a place where if I had a transcript, I would highlight that part because that's an important moment. And knowing when that happens and how early it happens in the conversation can lead credence to the point later that, hey, a lot of this conversation was about the move away from hedonism. Look at how early in the conversation that comes up and that starts, right? Um, so keeping in mind the purpose of the argumentation that I'm trying to put forward and the analysis that I'm trying to do will inform how I annotate or how I engage with this. And that's going to be the same if you're working with a book or something like that. So if you're reading a book and you know that by the end of the book, you have to write an essay that is summarizing the book, then you're going to want to note all the key plot points and where there's shifts there. But if you're making an argument about, uh, you know, what the themes are or the messaging is in the book or what some of the symbolism is, then it's completely different. You don't need to know a play by play of the story. You need to have all those examples of a symbol being brought up or a, a an example of a theme in the book that you're seeing over and over again. Um, so your purpose is going to inform a lot of the way that you engage with a piece of content. And that also applies to a lot of the things that I would tutor people in with essay writing in specific. And if you've ever paid for tutoring with me, which you can do by using exclamation point work, you can see my rates there and stuff. We're usually done within an hour of tutoring because using this framework of, all right, what is our purpose, which we'll get from looking at the prompt of the essay, which will give us a checklist of the things that we need to do in order to pass or in order to get a good grade, that is going to inform then our research phase because we should only be researching things according to the purpose that they will serve in the paper. So if we have 15 uh, quotes from 15 sources that we need, then every time we take a note on a source, or when we're looking for sources, we should be looking for sources that we can quote. You can't get a quote from the source. The source is not helpful to you because it doesn't serve our purpose. Um, and you know that really helps narrow in and clue you in to what your research process should look, should look like, and then later what the outlining process should look like. 
And in my opinion, an essay is basically done when you're done with your outline because the writing should be very simple and dry, right? So um, then your outline will be trying to check off all those boxes and organize all that information you got during your research phase into something that is palatable for somebody looking for this information. So we want to make it very easy for an essay grader to look at the paper and go, oh, yes, they have this and they have this and they're talking about this. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That's an A+. Plus. Um, so it's the same here. That's kind of what I'm doing. Um, and that's why I might not write down everything. Sometimes people are like, book smarts, did you see that she said this? Shouldn't you be writing it down? Book smarts, you wrote it down this way, but I think she said it that way. You know, you have to keep in mind what my purpose is. And a lot of the times the corrections and suggestions you're making just don't really fit in with what I'm trying to accomplish. And that might be why it's not getting written down. Um, either way, not super important to, uh, uh, it's the idea. Oh, I'm not reading that. We're already way past that. You took too long, Raul. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Raul. Too late. And I look back and I'm like, um, oh, fuck. I'm the exact same as I was five years ago. Did something break or am I like done growing or am I stuck in a, I'll say bubble, not in the way that you mean it, but like in some like, like reinforcing bubble where we all have the same thoughts and opinions and I've lost the ability to grow. Not a bubble. That's exactly what I mean by bubble. <laughs> it's sure, just okay, a sure, place yeah. where everyone yeah. Gonna, that would be, like, yeah. yeah, that would be really scary to me, especially because I'm an online streamer and it's easy for us to follow that because you have audience capture, you they can reinforce your own opinions, blah, blah, blah. Um, can I say something real quick? I'm sorry. Um, Miss Elisa is asking what I mean when I'm saying autistic. Sorry. So like, um, I'm like a very much like if, so if you were to tell me like, is this food like good or bad for you? Like, it feels like some people would ask like friends or family and I'd be like, oh, well, let's go and look up the studies and blah, 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 blah. And like th this like very like keen desire to kind of like pick apart like little facts and studies and data and kind of like assess things like that is that's typically how I think about the world. When I say autistic, I'm meaning a kind of half, it's not, I don't know if that's actually, I shouldn't say autistic, but versus like the more kind of like human story driven narrative stuff. That's what I'm using that juxtaposed to that. Um, I don't mean actually super autistic. Sorry. Just clearing that up. Okay, go ahead. I, I like that you're reading the chat because I did not see that coming. And like, she's one of my favorite commenters. Is she on your chat or my chat right now? Oh, she's my in chat yours. Or yours. I always have everything. Oh, okay, you're all five chats okay, are open. All of the same. I don't time. think I could. I just Good would get distracted, stream. but I appreciate you answering her question. She's great. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting to see this happening, but also very exciting. Of course, in my brain, I'm like, oh, what's he doing with it? Like, what are you going to do with it? But you said something in a, I think your conversation with Devin that made me go, oh. So there's a, a, a pattern I see in a lot of men mm -hmm. that I always think is interesting. Um, you said something about like legacy or basically like helping the world, like doing something that's bigger than you, but it feels very like uh, reputation e is that uh, am I projecting or like is that am I hearing it wrong? It sounds like yeah, f that. I don't. I actually just cringe. I don't care about that. Yeah. Okay, um, good. So what do you care about then? So this is how I'm viewing it now. Okay. Um, there was an an analogy that I picked up from the mere Christian. So again, to to continue that comment about purpose. So. I'm looking for places where she's kind of disagreeing with them. And I'm also kind of keeping track of the basic bullet points of what Steven is worried about. Because oftentimes when people are in conflict with Steven, especially lately, they are not understanding. They don't engage with his worries. He's a human being. When human beings make clear to you something is making them afraid, uncomfortable, uh, when something could lead to failure, you really want to be keeping track of that because it's going to be a really important thing to steer away from because anything you bring up that can make them feel like they're failing, that it's, it's making them confront something they're afraid of, you can begin to go into rocky territory. So when he's saying, I'm afraid of being in an idea loop, um, I'm picking this narrative versus autistic approaches because the autistic approach doesn't work for me me um you want to keep that in mind or like in the labels discussion he's afraid that labels are going to alienate parts of the audience they distract from having the conversation about the points that he wants to have and a lot of the people that he doesn't like are doing that approach with the labels and he doesn't feel it's productive if you don't tackle that you can argue till the cows come home that she, he should call Nick a Nazi and whatever, but you're not really addressing what he's saying about labels. So you're going to spend all this legwork talking up a storm about how he should be labeling people and whatever. And even if you get a concession at the very end, you're going to struggle to get him to bring that up over and over again or really care about the label thing. And you just wasted a bunch of time getting him bought into a label that you're not going to be able to do anything with. You got to kind of... Uh, it's like when you're driving, you have to look a few cars ahead of you. You shouldn't be super focused on the bumper of the car in front of you because that's not often where the best indication of danger is going to come. You need to look a few cars ahead 
because you want to have the reaction time to do something knowing that that problem is going to come about. If I'm seeing that he has this problem with labels for X, Y, Z reason, I don't think I should keep spending all this time on getting him to accept a label because at base, he doesn't think the labels are helpful at all. So looking a few cars ahead, I probably need to have a discussion about the utility of the labels and have a conversation at that level because that needs to be done in order for my label of Nazi to have any real meaning or impact on him. And rather than wasting all the conversational time, energy, frustration on this thing that isn't really important to getting your full point across, you know, I think you should invest that time and that energy better in the thing that's two cars in front of you. You want to know that you're going to have to swerve before the bumper of the car in front of you indicates that you're going to need the swerve because you're not really going to have the time at that point to react to it. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that's what we ought to do. Can you use a third of the left side of the screen for your video and VOD image and the rest of the two thirds for the notes? Um, yeah, let me see what that would look like here. Um, I am going to destroy this scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. And uh, I'm going to then edit it because I don't want to ruin my normal scene here. So if I understand you correctly, you want this like this maybe. And uh, maybe this much bigger. And uh, maybe, maybe we put me here or up here or right here. Is this better? Is this what you want? This is what you wanted? Um, I may be misunderstanding you. Can you use a third of the left side of your screen for your image and the VOD image? Oh, okay. I mean, I can make this smaller as well and then maybe I'll fit. Maybe I'll fit if I just do that. Problem is my my image is a little too big, so I'm gonna have to make myself a bit smaller. Something like uh, like this, maybe. Like this? This is good. Should I make me exactly their size so it's a little less uh, funky? Maybe like that. Yeah. Okay. Everybody agree that's a better setup for this. Uh, I th I think it looks fine. Uh, it's a bit weird with the black at the top left, but uh, I'm not gonna you know get too pernickety about it. Maybe it's just me, but I'm still confused why Destiny is dying on this hill. Um, Destiny is like Mr. Girl insofar as the concept of dying on a hill um, doesn't really exist for him because he's going to say what he believes and he's going to stick to it through thick or thin. Um, and you have to convince him out of it. So I'm going to put aside the dying on a hill thing. I don't think that's really the way you should look at it with Steven in particular. With any other streamer, yeah, because some streamers are more willing to be like, oh, I just won't talk about this thing, right? Um, but I, I don't think so. What would be the problem with Destiny just calling Nick a Nazi and moving on? Um, number one, he is dealing with other people and how they view the word Nazi, like, I, I, I'm I, going to end up rewording exactly what he said, but I'll do it in a book smarts way, so maybe it'll help. I just worry I'll explain this and you won't get anything out of it because I'll have to just repeat what Steven is saying. Um, the reason why he cares is, A, he doesn't think Nick is a Nazi. A, that's number one. Okay, so he's not just going to lie to shut up the conversation. Uh, that's not really his style. So that's number one, and probably the most important. That's what's three cars ahead, is he doesn't think that Nick is a Nazi. Number two, um, he doesn't think that these labels are productive, and if anything, they're antithetical to what he wants to accomplish in a conversation. With those two points alone, we got a 15-car pileup ahead of us, and there's no fucking way we're going to speed on through that. We're going to have to break. We're going to have to stop. The freeway is going to be closed, Okay. Um, those two things alone, conversation is over. A, he doesn't think he's a Nazi and he's not going to lie. And B, even if Nick was a Nazi, it's really not helping his conversations with him. It's antithetical to what he wants to accomplish. And other people, and here's the third thing, interpret Nazi in a different way than he interprets Nazi. And every community looks at it differently. And that word comes with baggage and an expectation that if Nazi then don't engage with them or change the way that you're engaging with them, right? 
And he's not going to do the then in that statement. So that's a third really important thing is even if Nick was a Nazi, it's not fundamentally going to impact the way that he's engaging with Nick. And as he said in his conversation with Mr. Girl, I feel like what you really want is moral condemnation. You're fighting really, really hard on the car in front of you about labeling him, but I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is three cars ahead of that. You want me to have a moral condemnation and a change in the way that I engage with Nick Fuentes. And you're sure as shit not going to get that. I'm not going to do it. So you're fighting real hard on the car in front of you. But I'm telling you, three cars up, there is a pile up and this is going nowhere. So those are kind of the three main reasons why he's dying on this hill. He's not going to lie about Nick being a Nazi. He doesn't think the labels are going to be helpful to what he's trying to accomplish. And he's not going to do this moral condemnation thing that normally comes alongside that label and alongside the expectations of people that want him to put that label on Nick. So that, that's how I would answer that. I hope that's helpful. Um, got it. A, Nick does not equal Nazi. B, labels are fundamentally unproductive. And C, if Nazi, then no more conversations for destiny. Yeah, he's not going to do C. Yeah, so all of that. There you go. Um, I like the car pileup analogy. I'm happy you do. Um, now it looks like you're having a conversation with them. Yeah, it's fun. I can pretend I was there. Um, anywho, let us continue. But I also heard a lot as a kid. Actually, I'm, I'm also going to... And I love this program. In case you don't know what it's called, it's called Notion. Um, and it just really works with the way my brain works because I can make these little things called toggles, which I'll show you the functionality of in a bit. And I'm going to create a toggle called Explanations, if I could spell right. And I'm going to put this explanation in there. And look at this, I just hit space, bam. Now I have a numbered list. So number one, Nick, and I think if I put, uh, Nick does not equal Nazi, okay? Um, oh, I wonder if it'll do this. Yes! <laughs> oh, I love Notion. Um, so Nick does not equal Nazi. Um, labels are, and I'm just gonna steal your wording here, are fundamentally unproductive and three so uh those are the main points and then because i don't want to look at this the whole time i click this little arrow and bam it's all gone right <laughs> I love that because then at the end of this, like I could put all of this, I could make a toggle and I could call that toggle uh, play by play or whatever I want. I can highlight all of this, click, drag and bada bing. And now we can have a very, very clean document. So I really love Notion and it's completely free. I would highly recommend it for note taking or anything else. Uh, Brittany just ended and now I'm here. Well, welcome. Um, We'll finish this up uh, ASAP. Also, if he labels Nick a Nazi, then Destiny gets lumped in with every other lefty person that he believes is misusing the word. By not using the word, he's staying out of that bubble. Yeah, um, I'm also gonna add a sub point to this. And we'll do it here. Um, actually, I'll put that under here um, because uh, that's part of why he finds them fundamentally unproductive because other people have baggage um, and uh, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh, I tried. Go ahead, hit it. Okay, it's with an I. Sick, so I'm just gonna put all that in there and tuck it away and continue here. But basically it's this idea that, um, there's actually a lot of analogies to look up. 
when, when you engage with the world, um, when everybody engages with the world, I think some people have certain talents or gifts that they have th th through whatever, either natural, they were born a certain way, or they um, picked up things as they were growing up or whatever. But by the time you hit certain um, like points in your life, you're capable of doing things that are exceptional compared to other people. And mm -hmm. I think before I would kind of say that like you should just pursue what makes you happy and do that, and I still think that's important. But there's like a separate category now that I, I didn't recognize or I didn't have language to describe before, separate from happiness, which is this concept of like fulfillment, basically. And I think that this idea of like fulfillment comes more from like pursuing and like pursuing to the most, like kind of some of these like natural talents that you have that you can do better than other people in society. And I think you kind of owe it to society to pursue those. And you owe it to society and owe it to yourself to like pursue those things to their fullest, because I think why? you can contribute like really unique things to the world that otherwise just won't exist. So for instance, why? if you take somebody like, wait, why, why, why do those contributions? Yeah, like also is I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll repeat all that and it'll be much quicker because I got to rehearse it. Um, so in terms of guiding principles, I try to keep these in mind when I'm doing things. Number two is improve and promote listening. I think that Brittany is struggling with listening here. And rather than listen, she's asking questions while speaking over the answers to that question. While she's asking why over and over again, she's saying that over him giving the answer to that very question. She is speaking over him saying, utilizing these abilities gives you fulfillment. She's speaking over him saying, you ought to do this to benefit society. So she's saying why, 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 but she's not listening for the answer to her question. And when we ask a question, generally speaking, it's because we want the answer. If you cared about the answer, but you're speaking over the answer to ask the question, you're kind of uh, messing up a little bit here. I don't know if that's contributing to what the commenters had said about her narrow perception. But for me, and the way that I evaluate conversations, looking at your ability to promote communication, you're trying to get forward what you're trying to say, while at the same time, interpreting what other people are telling you in the best way possible. She's failing on the second point here. So hopefully that improves a little bit. She's very, very uh, hyper a little bit with her energy. And that might be part of why she's jumping to this question while speaking over him. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Destiny explains his thoughts on labeling to Nick Fuentes last night on Politically Provoked. It was a great conversation on his current arc. Maybe we'll watch that um, if there's a bunch of support for, for this video. <laughs> um, I haven't got my first paycheck yet for that job, okay? So I'm still, uh, you know, a streamer. Uh, anywho, let's continue. Is my audio shit today? Nope, you're fine. Hey, weird, everyone's telling me it's shit today. I don't know why. Okay, you shouldn't be. Okay, why? But why? Like, why? Because it just, it makes the, like the world is like a richer, better, more human place. Like, if you look at somebody like Einstein and you think that, like, that's a guy that could have played League of Legends all day, but instead he pursued physics. Or if you look at, like, Michelangelo, like, great artists or whatever, like, these are all people that they have, like, this world that they fit in. Um, I'll say this circular, transparent thing that they could fit in, theoretically. Um, but they have ways of, like, poking at the edges or pushing boundaries that other humans can't do. And I think that when you do that, you're, like, expanding the whole of, like, what it even means to be human or what encompasses all of humanity. You're making these unique contributions to human history that like makes the world like better in, in measurable and immeasurable ways for everybody. Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Um, at some point, you're, it's just going to be some deeply innate human drive to like have a better world, I guess. Like, I don't know how much deeper it can go then. 
you can do anything. You're in this like position mm-hmm. in your life where like you've got money, a reputation, you're handsome, all these things, mm-hmm. and this is what you've decided to do. I, I feel like anything. the deeper, yeah. So in a ways, it, it's all reductively hedonistic, I guess. But there's like mm-hmm. there's a deeper sense of fulfillment, or there's a deeper sense, there's a different kind of happiness that you get from doing fulfilling things versus things that just make you happy. Um, the- I I wish, and and here's a communication thing. He says some things here because he's repeated them so often. I think he takes for granted people understand what he's talking about. Like when he said narrative versus autistic approaches, he explained the narrative, the thing that he really wants to do super in depth, failed to explain the autistic thing super well. So people had questions about the autistic thing here. We know that Brittany's a hedonist. We know the problem that she had earlier in the conversation we probably wanted to focus on this to bridge this gap so she understands the why better. Because as a hedonist, if we explain it in hedonistic terms, we can maybe get her to understand this why question in a way that we won't if we're talking about external benefits, right? So when he says it can be reductively hedonistic, what he means is that we could talk about this in such a way where we're talking from this kind of paradigm of like, what benefits me as a person well, A better society benefits me as a person for a variety of reasons. It will give me more fulfillment, which she's already said, but she's not trying to listen. Um, It will benefit society, which therefore benefits me, and it might benefit my kid and further generations of people that I would care about or I hold dear, right? We can shift a lot of these benefits or these reasons that he's talking about in a way that will benefit the individual if we really wanted to. Um, But that's a lot less interesting than talking at the larger level about the way it benefits everybody else, though that's an opinion statement. For me, it feels better, but for her as a hedonist, she probably doesn't care about that framing, so she wants to know about why it benefits you as an individual. Um, But he just briefly says that. Uh, Maybe we'll get deeper into it. Um, Let's see. The thing that I'll always compare it to is, uh, you've read before, right? Do you ever read? (laughs) Thousands. Yeah. Okay. There's like a yeah. feeling that you Thousands. get when you turn the final page in a book that you can never get from browsing a hundred of the funniest memes on Reddit, right? Yeah. There's. It's almost like a yeah. melancholic feeling of like leaving it. Like, and that that only comes because of all the friction and all of the work it took to get to that point. There's a huge time investment. There's a special like you have to set aside moments of your life to pursue something to read. It's an active engagement of your mind. There's a whole lot of work that goes. And once you've hit that point, once you've overcome the friction of finishing that adventure, we'll say in a book, there's like a special mm-hmm. sense of fulfillment mm-hmm. that you get that's a lot different than just pushing the next button on your phone on like 9gag or Reddit or Image or whatever. Totally. Like I will, I'm literally even and when I think about moving, I'm like, even if I moved overseas, how many books could I take with me? I just want to like, there's nothing more satisfying, right? Like uh-huh. I've been waking up. It's that's why I told you I've been waking up at 6 a.m. So I could read for 45 minutes. So I could actually get back into reading a book a week because uh-huh. I was like, I could do a book a day in the past. And now I'm like, I don't know why I can't quite do it. But OK, wait, this is great. I know you're trying to like not exactly use my framework, which is fine. Someone said that in the comments. The only reason I, yeah, so the only reason I'm trying to say bubbles, I know that you have like other definitions, and I don't want to like stumble into saying. They don't. No, no, no. The definition is just like this. We all live in cultural bubbles, like sure. say it that way, or like we all live in spaces where we think this. Like Ethan lives in his own world. We all live in our different worlds. We all live in different worlds, right? Mm-hmm. So when we observe people, we can see where they're coming from and why they chose what they chose because people aren't that much of a mystery. Mm-hmm. With you, I think because you're so open, it's cool to ask you like why you've decided to do certain things. Um, it feels a little bit though, a little bit, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. How does it feel like, okay, you know how Sneeko has had this, like, I love just my son. He's just, ah, but he's going through this great journey and he's really like owning the particular bubble he's in. He's really like selling fast. Like he's done everything according to the algorithm. He's really finding success. Mm -hmm. I can see why he did that. Mm -hmm. He's literally saying it. He's looking for something. He's going to go find it. But with you, you're saying I'm going to. Okay. never mind. Um, (laughs) we'll talk about it later. Okay. Me? (laughs) Yeah. This particular thing. Um, it's a, it's a, I understand what you're saying. Um, it's a more complicated conversation, Fine. but I understand I'll what you're saying, you. but Fine. yeah, but okay. I just, I can't have, I just can't talk about it on stream. <laughs> um, I understand Brittany's request to speak in her terms, in terms of bubbles. Um, what Brittany misses the, cause normally I'd agree, right? We should speak in terms that other people can like, um, that they can understand. But th- part of the problem is kind of like how in languages, sometimes words exist that explain a really complicated idea 
in a single phrase, but there, that doesn't exist in another language. So you don't really communicate the full power of that single word, even through an explanation of the word in the other language. I think that we have that here where like Brittany's way of viewing the world, in my opinion, this is just an opinion, um, is so simplistic that it misses a lot of the f mechanics of what is actually happening. I don't personally think if you want to capture the richness of the world that using Brittany's method of, of looking at it gets you there. It misses, it cuts out so much of what's actually going on in the world. And that is the case here. There are ideas here you cannot really communicate through the bubble thing. And if you did, it would be so low fidelity that it would miss what makes it important. And if Brittany expects other people to use her terminology to explain to her what we're talking about, the problem is it becomes so low fidelity, so low definition that it cuts out and it cuts corners on the parts that we actually think are the important ones. So... I understand what she's asking for. The problem is to do that misses so much of his point that he can't really communicate his point by sticking in the way that she talks about things with bubbles. And that that's a lot of my problem with kind of her prescription of how to look at reality is this bubble model and this introspection model misses so much of the actual relationships and complicated cultural things between people that it's just not a good way of looking at the world and describing it because it's going to miss a lot of the interesting parts of the world in my opinion um her language, yes, just remember she has her secret partner for her thinkings. I don't even know what that means. Sometimes you can make assumptions about what others believe and you end up talking past them. Sure. What is going on in that last interaction? What is the double take? I, I don't know. I don't I don't really know what uh, we're referring to there. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. You're right. Okay, though. No okay yeah. Okay. <laughs> to be clear, I'm not looking at the video. I'm looking at my notes. If you're talking about something they did, I don't know. If you're talking about something I did, I'm an emotive guy. I'm not really going to remember what I double take down. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Well, um, shoot. That's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit. Um, have you been otherwise good? Um, yeah. Lots of crazy stuff. Lots of funny memes. Lots of, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah wild stuff. How's uh, life been going for you? I'm proud of you. You've overcome a lot in that you're on a healthy sleep schedule. <laughs> Good job. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? A lot of people you? aren't able to do that. A lot of people aren't able to get off the ultra toxic sleep shit into like a normal sleep schedule. I notice now if I message you at 11 o'clock, you're like, sorry, I was already sleeping. Good job. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Literally, I'm so proud because all you night owls, everyone hits me up past 10 and I'm mm -hmm. like, I love that for someone makes me feel loved waking up to so many nice messages, but I cannot. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to wake up at six, I can't. Like I need to be in bed at least eight to nine hours mm -hmm. just because I don't sleep good at all anyways. Mm -hmm. um, have you been sleeping? Um, okay. My sleep's always like, okay, not the greatest, not the worst. Not the greatest, not the worst. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Do, um... What, what was I going to say? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you talk about this publicly. Do you still smoke at all, or...? Girl, no, I stopped smoking because of my lupus, but <gasps> I do do my edibles all the time. So May oh, was okay. my last my last hit. But yeah, I got to get it. Now, remember, we read some comments about the drug thing, so I am going to note this. So, is she still smoking? No. Lupus. Edibles. She's doing edibles now. Let's see where this goes. Like, I gotta be high, unless I'm having babies, which right oh, now no. is 36. No, no. You can no, do it, no. That's the next one. Once you what? break the what? weed thing, oh my <laughs> god, you're gonna unlock your mind. That's what you need to get from level four to five, Brittany. You're trapped at level no, 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 four, no, no, it's no, the no. weed level. <laughs> Why are you trying to take my drugs away from me? I actually, I was curious about that. I guess you mm -hmm. don't do drugs. Like, you're never high on stream or drunk on stream. You're sober. How do you, do you just like not like it? Uh, I, I love drugs. Drugs are fucking awesome. Everybody, everybody should explore drugs. drugs. I think drugs okay. are a very good vacation. Super fun to get a change in perspective, to explore yourself or other people in ways you haven't before and in ways you can't. Love mushrooms, MDMA, LSD. Um, meth one time on accident was still a really fun time, but um, these are really, really, really fun drugs. But when they become part of your regular routine, I think that's really scary to me. Um, so like smoking every day, doing edibles every day, I think is I think is bad habits. I think that's uh, so yeah. So I love drugs, super love doing it with people. Really fun way to get to know people, exploit people, exploit yourself. But am I trying to make it any part of like my regular daily routine? Because I'd be worried about. That. Can I be real? If that person before wanted to make a comment about her usage of drugs and whatever, I gotta say the quote. You gotta be high is probably a lot worse than the quote about you know spacing out when you're doing drugs to get the feeling out of them 
Um, if she applies that to weed, I would be very much raising an eyebrow because she says that she's doing weed all the time and doing edibles all the time. If she's talking about a harder drug and she doesn't say that she's doing hard drugs all the time, that still makes sense to me. If she says it for weed, I'm going to not believe her because every indication I've had so far, it seems like she's a habitual weed smoker. So if she talks about tolerance breaks and whatever, I'm going to listen closely to see what she actually means there that being a necessity for me to function yeah totally well i mean obviously i've i take i believe in like breaks like take a break it's so much better when you come back mm -hmm. um i will say i am less productive obviously if i'm high in during the day so i try to stay high after a certain time or mm -hmm. if it's a high stream then we just celebrate together but you're right that like certain you shouldn't hopefully you wouldn't have anything that would hold you back but recently someone told me that i should face some of my issues but some of them are just like like i'm really sensitive about gags like when people gag i'm like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna join them <laughs> Don't wait have you me. seen have you what? seen a video? I probably can't. I probably can't watch it. I probably can't watch oh, it. Shit. There's a girl that has that problem. There's a bunch of guys around her. He's like, hey, how are you feeling? Uh, and then she's like, uh, and then she starts doing it. Yeah, okay, sorry, yeah okay, okay. No, no, but no, no, yeah, no. then they just do that to her all day. Okay, so my brother, that's why I, all day my brothers just do it and they stand outside my door and they yeah, think it's yeah. so funny. But I really have puked from it. So someone recently told me that I should, uh, I should challenge myself and get over that. What mm -hmm. do you think about that? Should we get rid of all of our weaknesses? Um, I mean, probably not all of it. it depends on how. I don't know where that weakness comes from. Is that something you can get over, or? I, I think it's just know. an association, maybe. Like you know, you just you see. Ugh, I can't. Even there's like a scene in Disney's Milan where she tries matters. to spit and she can't like complete it. And I'm like, <laughs> that scene makes me want to every time. Like I'm like, oh. So like I'm very like sensitive, but I don't know if that would change my life for the better. Getting rid of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if getting rid of weed would really change my life for the better if you're disciplined with its use. Well, but you do it every single day. So how disciplined are you? I don't think discipline means like I, I do it at the same time every single day. Oh, I think that person was saying that she isn't taking breaks to prevent addiction, but takes breaks because dr the drugs feel better when you return. It's just a statement where I don't see why this is bad, though. Like, I hold on. I'm going to reopen it because we probably will keep returning to this comment that we read. Um, let me reread the comment and it'll fuck up your guys' view of the thing for a second. Brittany talking about not being dependent on drugs is hilarious. She gave the most copium answer to her relationship with drugs. Yeah, take breaks so it's better the next time. I don't I just don't see how this is a copium answer. It, it it literally sounds like she's just openly admitting, like, at no point is she being copium about her addiction to weed. It seems like she's being pretty straightforward and painting the picture for all of us that she is a regular cannabis user. And the only time she's not doing cannabis is to take a break so that maybe it'll feel better next time. Like, maybe this will come up later in the conversation. Maybe we'll hit a better quote to understand what they're talking about. But, like, that still just does not make sense. Um and yeah, for my personal opinion, it is better that you don't do it, but I am no saint. I get stuck in a process of doing it all the time, but I know acutely even when I'm in that process, it's not the best. It would be better if you didn't. Um, that's just my two take, my my two cents on it. Hey, that's not what whoa, discipline means. Whoa, 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 sir. I can go off it anytime though, bitch. Like I just went. But you do it every single day, so how disciplined are you? I don't know if that would change my life for the better, getting rid of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if getting rid of weed would really change my life for the better if you're disciplined with its use. Well, but you do. Ah, uh, uh oh. And now we're hitting into some rocky territory because she isn't disciplined in its use. Discipline is not that you can take a break, although maybe that points towards you thinking that you're not addicted to it. Um, but I don't think you're, I don't think disciplined is you can take a break. <laughs> like, I don't think that's discipline. I think that's like, I'm not addicted because I can take a break, but that has, that's not discipline. I think disciplined is that, like, if you told me that you're disciplined about your use of weed, it means that you're not letting it impede anything in your life that you want to do. And she's already admitted that that happens a lot. Like some things are harder or slower when high and she's high like all the time, except for a few breaks. So if her use is how she's explained it to me, she's not disciplined. Uh, being able to take a break doesn't mean you're disciplined at all. Um, that's my opinion. Um, but maybe we'll dive into this. 
the discipline in its use is where people get the copium from. Like I can quit whenever I want. I took a break last week so it could feel better. It just depends on what, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. So I'm just, I'm just going to let it continue. Cause I, I don't want to argue with ghosts, but I, I'm just going to give my take and stick to that. Cause I, if I start arguing, it's not going to be fun for me. I've explained to you guys, I don't really like arguing. Um, so I'm not going to argue. Okay. Cause I, I want to have fun in the stream. Okay. <laughs> to me, it seems like she is going to rationalize her addiction. Oh God. I'm I am going to have to actually address it. So hold on. Um, how do I, how do I bridge this gap? I think there is a subtle but important difference between a habit and an addiction. I think there's a subtle difference between these two things. And with habit, I think you have way more gradient by what it means to have a habit, right? But addiction, there's a certain threshold you cross and then like it extends further, but it's all just really, really bad and awful, right? It's, it's life destroying. You have no control over it, right? I want to stick to habit as the way I would describe her use of it. Um, because as she has described so far, if she is taking breaks and she can take the breaks and she doesn't struggle when she takes the breaks, I would just err on the side of caution and call it a habit. Okay. Um, if she was talking about, yeah, I mean, like you could take breaks, but I mean, I don't know how practical that is because you know how difficult it is to stop and then you get the fucking headaches and it's awful. You know, I think like a week here and there throughout the year is totally fine, you know, because you need to build the tolerance up. Maybe you got something you need to do in your life. But I mean, for the most part, I just do it all the time. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> moving over from habit to addiction, right? I just don't have the details to like make that call the way you guys have in this way. And as somebody who has been like a pretty big habitual smoker and been like in and out of like addiction with it, where it's like, if I wanted to stop, I'm not sure I have the self-control to make that call at this point. I think that from habit to addiction, it's like a slope you're falling down. I don't know if I'm necessarily of the mind for everything of like, addicted is a binary state and you live with it forever the way that like alcoholics have to think about it. I think it gets a little bit more complicated with weed. Um, so that, that's kind of, uh, agreed with that distinction hundred percent. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Good. Addiction usually requires significant negative impact on your life. I don't, I don't do that either. Um, I don't think that's a requirement at all. I think some people's lives are so shitty that like there isn't really a huge negative impact relative to how they're living. Like if you're a boring do nothing person that goes home, plays video games, goes to your work, goes home, plays video games, goes to work, staying at the same job forever. I don't think there is a significant difference in the, in the value or quality of your life between smoking every time you get home and playing video games and never changing your job or improving and not smoking and doing video games every day when you come home and not and changing your life or improving, right? Th like you guys are making calls without really knowing anything about somebody's life. And just for me personally, I see this as a lot more complicated. I would need more information to be making these calls. I don't think it's a requirement, but it's an indicator. Sure. Physical dependence is different from addiction. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it is. Um, somebody could be not addicted and physically dependent, which I think happens with a lot of people on weed. Anywho, let us continue because I don't want to derail too far. I think I've made my points as good as I can make them. And if you guys disagree, then it is what it is. And if you'd like to talk with me about this further, catch me on the Discord, exclamation point Discord. I'd be happy to talk about it. But while I'm putting on a show for everybody, I don't want to get stuck on this. You know what I mean? Um, thank you, books. Yeah, no problem.
You do it every single day, so how disciplined are you? I don't think discipline means like I, I do it at the same no. time every single day. That's not whoa, what discipline means. Whoa, 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 sir. I can go off it anytime though, bitch. Like I just went a week off of it. I was at my mom's house. I didn't, uh -huh. I didn't you know, I try not to do drugs in her house. Mm -hmm. It's like, it is just what it is. Like, but uh -huh. you should utilize everything for your own benefit. And I think weed benefits. Plus my nutritionist and my doctor want me on weed. So what are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? Um. Exactly. There's no way that, first of all, I don't even know if nutrition is a real thing. Doctor, okay. I'm guessing the doctor what? probably said that if you have pain or nausea related to anything, that you should probably like do some sort of CBD stuff in that time. I don't know if you need no. THC. I it's don't know. THC, baby. It's THC. Is THC baby. the thing that alleviates the uh, the nausea and everything, or is it the CBT, CBD? It's the it's the pain. It's the, uh, loop, like autoimmune disorders have a lot uh -huh. of like physical chronic pain. But also, I told him. Actually, let's do this. Oh, eh, I could just probably get it it from here. Um, where is no? It's a get access thing. Let me click the PDF here. So to explain what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find lupus in here. Look for the citation that should give me the article that I want to look at. All right, so that's going to be footnotes or uh whatever sixty one sixty two. So we'll go down here and we'll go to 61, 62. Um, successfully treated invasive pulmonary Asperger's. <laughs> okay, probably not that. And 62, effects uh, on the immune system. Okay, so that's probably what we're going to want. So let's see if I can find this real quick. Because it says there's only one study on this website, but uh, this is lupus.org. Um, mm, 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 probably this. Cited by 133. Okay, we're moving up the chain with the number of citations we have. Looking good, looking good. Let's see if we can find lupus. No, oh, it is not in the abstract, so clearly that's not the focus of this particular study. But if I go here, um, where are we at with lupus? It is in here, and I just need to find where it is in here. Um, oh, this won't give us the full thing, hey? Unfortunate. Okay, let us keep looking then. This is looking good. Okay, let us find our lupus. Where is my lupus? The fatigue uh, severity scale application to patients with multiple sclerosis. Okay, no, it's going to be about our pain here. Here we are. Um, okay, so rheumatoid arthritis, systemic, uh, systematic, whatever, lupus, blah, blah, blah. Treatment presents clinical challenge for several reasons. Presently, there are limited, if any, modern studies examining the effects of CBD products on pain and other outcomes or Raynaud's disease. Um, this case report describes the potential efficacy and safety of a daily high dose medical grade CBD product in the treatment of persistent pain. Okay, so we're only really finding cannabidol. So I I didn't put a lot of time into this, but my guess would be that this has to do with CBD and not THC. And I know a few things that THC is like explicitly looked into or helpful for. 
partly because you it's harder to study than CBD. Um, you know, so her getting high and finding it easier to operate when high is very different than um, doing that with CBD. So um, to give you an example, this here, I have a little vape pen in um, Romania, THC and weed and whatever is illegal. CBD isn't. I will take this uh, if I'm feeling a lot of anxiety or just before bed um, because it, it helps with that. But it doesn't help in any way where like I can see and observe 100% that it's happening the way I can when I get high, right? And I think a lot of regular people, when they're getting high, um, they're able to look at that experience and take from it whatever they want and block out the things that are not really helping this narrative about it. Um, whereas CBD, you take it and it's kind of like taking medicine. You may not really notice that it's helping, but it's helping. Uh, at least in my experience, I, I don't immediately notice some difference, but when I look at like the trends of my sleeping schedule and stuff, I do notice I fell asleep quite quicker, but I'm not getting drowsy after take you. I don't feel anything when I, when I hit CBD. Um, so yeah, uh, big difference there. And if she's using edibles all the time, I doubt that they are CBD edibles. She's probably just getting high all the time and, uh, yeah, it's not good. Okay. Well, that has answered all of my questions. Let's just get back to this. Um, anywho, let's continue. I was already doing TH. I was like, I take THC all the time. They're like, great, stay on it for your sleep. It's really helpful. For my sleep, it's very helpful. I otherwise I'm just up all night thinking about like all the ways I I just really doubt the THC thing, but I don't know about her conversations with their doctors. I feel bad saying anything about it. It could definitely help with eating. THC helps with eating. Um, because it makes you hungry. Uh but Okay, let us just continue because this is going to turn into a whole thing. I can make a video tomorrow, like all the things I could do. And then I'll be up talking to you at 11 when I shouldn't mm -hmm. be. I should be in bed. Okay, well. So I will say, I'm just saying. That's good. You found a per uh, an actual cope for your drug obsession. I'm proud of you. Not everybody can do that. Good job. You want this like Andrew Tate journey where he's like, no drugs? No, I think people should do what they want. I just get, I know a lot of people who smoke every day. I just don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> no, I do know how I feel about it. It's not good. <laughs> I don't think you should do it every day. But hey, listen, it's your life. You do you, do oh you babe. God. You do you, Habibi. Oh my God. Oh, Habibi, oh, Habibi. Okay, okay, okay. Well, damn. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything I want to talk to you about sounds a little too much. Lav had to cancel on me last minute, so. What a bitch. Why'd she cancel? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. She can. She's for her own reasons. She has her reasons. They mm -hmm. all do. They always oh, have their so reasons. now you're telling me it was like a reason, like something worth, like actually, not like a random, like oh she was busy, but no, there's some shit going no, on. No, very boring. Very mm -hmm. boring. Mm -hmm. You know. We're I will say this though, um, because I see a comment and I really want to respond to it. It'll be the last thing, okay? And we're shenaniganzing any talk about it because if you guys chat about it, you're gonna tempt the fuck out of me. So shenanigans on any more weed discussion. If it doesn't keep coming up in this conversation, we're not talking about it anymore because I just don't want to keep getting derailed. But you say, Michael Dudley, like she runs a YouTube channel and apparently pays the bills and such. So I'm not seeing where it's hurting her. What my counter to this would be opportunity cost. I could be living a fine life and be high all the time but there could be a very clear opportunity cost to smoking. You could better your life, better your position at work, better your lot in the overall society more, probably, if you weren't smoking all the time. And she seems to be acutely aware of that when she's saying that things are harder or slower when high. She could probably be more successful with her business endeavors, more successful in life in general, if she wasn't high all the time. That that would be my shot in the dark. So when we're talking about like, oh, but you know, they're paying their bills and they're having a job and whatever, it's fine. Like I get the sentiment of that. I don't disagree with the sentiment, but when we're talking about like at an argumentative level, I just wanna make sure that we're clear there is often an opportunity cost to smoking weed. That's why I said, it, that's why I set up an example where if you don't want to change anything about your life and you're just doing unhealthy habits all the time, then adding this other unhealthy habit into it isn't making a significant difference in the outcome of your life. So it's fine. But 
if you want to be successful at these different things that you're trying to do, the weed could definitely have an impact on you accomplishing that stuff. And I think it's very important to make that distinction there. Um, one bit of advice that I got from somebody about weed is if you want to change your life, you shouldn't be smoking weed. Weed is for people who have accepted where their life is at and are going through the motions of it. That's who weed is for. If you want to change something about your life, weed is going to make it more difficult to change that thing. Now, if you're talking about sleeping or you're talking about eating, it could have a positive impact, but we're fucking narrowly looking at a couple of things. If we widen our perspective, it's making most things more difficult for you to accomplish. And for that reason, like, I just want to make that point clear. I don't necessarily disagree with the sentiment of what you're saying, but it's not including what I want to hear, which is that there's a big opportunity cost to smoking weed, even if you're able to like maintain a job and make income and whatever. Um, you could probably be better at all of those things if you were not smoking weed. Um, gotcha. Yeah, that, that's just what I want to make clear. Is opportunity cost what else you could have done with the same time if you spent on X but have better luck? Opportunity, I'm just going to look it up so I have you an exact definition. Okay. The loss of other alternatives when one alternative is chosen. So uh, I think this is a really good image for it. So if you choose to go down road A, the opportunity cost is everything down road B that you would have gotten. And if there is a delta, if there is a difference between these two things, that is what the opportunity cost is. It's what you could have achieved that would have been different had you chosen the other path. And I think going down the weed path, you can only look at the weed path, like you can close your mind off to all of this over here, right? You can close your mind off to all that stuff over there. You could just look at this and be like, yeah, that's being chilling, bro. Look, there's a castle. You get to go to a castle. If you went down A, so what's the problem with that? But it leaves out B. It, it doesn't include B in any of the factoring of what makes that a good or bad decision. It's when you include B that I think the it becomes more clear the cost. Because if you just don't look at what the alternative could have been, you miss out on that by just looking at the road that you chose to go down, right? Even if there's a castle at the end of it, even if you're successful, it's what you left on the table by making that decision that that I think the difference comes in. Um, so that, that that's what I would say. Um, anywho, Shenanigans. In case you didn't know what shenanigans is, it means if you mention this again, you'll be timed out, okay? Because I just don't want to be distracted by it. So we are done with weed discussion. From here on out, you've been warned. You mentioned weed or this argument again, you're going to be timed out because I just don't want to be distracted anymore. I, I want us to move on. Try it. We'll try again on Friday. Um, oh, she just told me why. She said she overslept because she was smoking weed because she's addicted to drugs too. She said you need to stop immediately. Oh, no. Oh my god. I, you know what? You're starting to sound like my conservative parents. I'm going to get triggered. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad. Actually, I think my dad would be more libertarian at this point where he'd say, it's just a plant. Let her smoke it. Leave my daughter alone. Well, sore pop. I have, that's all I really want to talk to you about. I'm afraid I'm a, otherwise I'm just kind of... Mm. Okay, what have you been up to? In general, on it, well, <laughs> um, being a girl and being pretty happy and then uh, I'm also in hustle mode right now. So I'm trying to like really bunker down and focus, uh, especially since I had to take a week off a few, like a couple weeks ago. Shangans doesn't apply to me. I will say if she's on hustle mode again, opportunity cost. Could you do hustling better if you were high or if you weren't high? Think. And now I'm back on it, which is good. Um, I might move. Definitely not to Florida. Ooh, wow. Everyone keeps telling me to move to Florida, but I, I even with the lupus now that I'm like allergic to the sun, basically, I really shouldn't be in Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's reasonable, mm -hmm. but just getting ready for the new year, you know. Okay. Are you like big holiday people? Mm, it, just Christmas, really, because uh, you know we all get together and all the ten kids come together and we all have a huge celebration. Do you have like a Why, great, great, great grandma or anything? Everyone's dead now. Oh fuck! Which is I always sad. thought it was. We all just 
Yeah. I was going to say, it was always really interesting. My kid's mom, they would have like family reunions. And I think her, I want to say it was her great, great grandma was alive. And it's always interesting being near a person and like you're around them. And there's like a hundred people that kind of <laughs> all came from that one person in a way. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, it's like a Didn't weird. someone just say this in a video? Wait. Was it one of mine? Andrew Tate, I think. Or somebody just said. Oh, it was, it was like... an Andrew Tate thing, actually. Yeah, that's true. He reminded yeah. me of that. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, he was no. saying that, like, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Women can do the blah, blah, blah. And like, you see all yeah. these people create about. Yeah, yeah. He, did. he reminded me of that. Yeah. So actually, this might be quite controversial because uh -oh. with my background, and my grandparents have all just passed. Like, I just lost my last two grandfathers, and one was over 103, and the other one was in his 80s. But like, my mother's family, very unorthodox. Like, my grandma was married at 12 mm -hmm. to like my grandpa, who was like 18. Neither of them wanted to get married. Uh -huh. Like, neither of them wanted to do that. He wanted to be a priest, and he got, he said no. Mm -hmm. um, Cause he was the only boy at the time. Mm -hmm. And then my grandma, it was just how will things go? You get your period, mm -hmm. you get married, mm -hmm. you know, it's your rock. What are you going to do? So they, from them alone, and they stayed married till they both died. Um, she of Alzheimer's and pneumonia and him of old age and COVID. Okay. But um, they had 18, 17 kids, Jeez, 26, fuck. if you count the miscarriages. Mm, my mom, I think is number 14, maybe. She, my mom had 10 kids. Her sister had 10 kids. My, you know, everyone ever. So when we all get together, I think I have like, 80 first cousins and then all of them have cousins and then all of them are we going to talk about anything else interesting or is it just going to be small talk the rest of this i'm going to assume he didn't give me timestamps. nope because last night destiny and not august hey has anybody watched this people in the back do we talk about anything else interesting or is it just like small talk for the rest of it um because it's been small talk. I'll end it here. We said a lot of cool stuff. Um, I just, I don't like listening to Brittany about all this stuff. I, I, I really don't care. Um, like at this point in the video, if I was watching on my own, I would probably just skip ahead to see if we see anything else that's interesting. But if it's not about this title, about change, I just don't care about her stories and stuff really. Um, I think this is pretty much the vibe. I avoid Brit conversations, so I don't know. Sorry. I'm skipping. I'm skipping ahead. People that think that men are above women in the household and all that. <laughs> fucking I hope she gets raped. I was like, bro, are you fucking serious right now? Like, yeah, I don't know. Running the household. Or what, like, it seems like you've got a better hold on like the finance. You work more like that. That's and I'm like, you guys suck. <laughs> like, why, why the fuck would any? I don't know, but you actually, that'd be kind of high, like you in the robes. Mm. Growth, or I had a lot of conflict with a particular person and scenario involving this person. And it was out of that conflict that I had to reorganize or reanalyze or rethink of a lot of different things in order to kind of like make sense of things that had happened and to like move on from that event. And it'll usually be through big moments of conflict in my life that I'm forced to kind of like reevaluate or change things basically. 1.5x? No, I'm on 1.2. I'm not going to go above because VOD people get fucked. I think those are what I grow best from. Um, there's a game that used to play called StarCraft. Have you ever played before? Oh, do you like life happening yeah. in your own like right now would you say it's happening in your business life because that's what you're changing from the outside uh here we hey, recently about any details i had a lot of you or your relationships or the way you like this it's always mm -hmm. like this 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 like you you mm -hmm. stagnant for a bit you have a bump in growth you stagnate for a bit you have a thing um but like in the beginning of my first like two to three years of paul um it means i need to be able to convert to see if you fit there like you said you're in transition so i don't know but you actually that'd be kind of high like you in the robe mm. Something, something in your energy right now, which is so different than normal. But obviously, like you said, you're in transition, so that's fine. Gotcha. But you, it like, it feels like you did this. It feels like you were like this. You're like debate, bro. Oh, switch from Twitch to YouTube, and then it feels like now you went to like Fresh and Fit, and you had those conversations, and now you're gonna go to a different place to see if you fit there. Are you looking for where you fit, Destiny? Um, I've I've been transitioning for like a year now. It's been something that I've been like actively seeing. It might not have been. There have been some things that have kind of like moved it along a little bit quicker. But um, I've been trying to figure out constantly how to be like a more effective political communicator, and that. To do that is like a that's like a thing here that involves a lot of changes up here in order to bring that in line. So like being able here to, in your consciousness or up here in like somewhere. um like being an effective political communicator is downstream from a whole bunch of more mm. fundamental things because like fundamentally what does it mean to be a political communicator? Um, it means I need to be able to converse with and convince people that believe totally different things that I believe or have totally different thought processes. So there's a demand on a person like that to um, either have the prerequisite experiences or the tools to gather information from people that believe like totally different things and then be able to speak to them in ways that they can understand you and i think there's a lot of skill sets there to work on and it might require like a fundamental reworking of how you view the world um, so like one example of Doing that, that though since what? day one like haven't you done that like throughout your whole career like changed and updated and you've been so many different stevens so how is this change any different than your other changes um i mean it's all part of the same 
journey path thing maybe like i don't know if it's fundamentally like a massively different thing um but like in the beginning of my first like two to three years of politics i was basically like a big i was like the huge like bully like if we're gonna have a debate i'm gonna destroy you and make you feel stupid and that's how i'm gonna like convince your fans to follow me instead or whatever like that was kind of the um that was kind of the path and then i've tried to be more like compassionate or empathetic over the past several um over the past like one or two years, I think especially I've tried that a lot. Aww. And then over the past year, especially I've focused on honing in like my understanding or my empathy for other types of people too. So it's all been kind of like that process. But just like growing in the real world, um, growth is never like, growth is never like this. It's always mm -hmm. like this, 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 like you, you mm -hmm. stagnate for a bit, you have a bump in growth, you stagnate for a bit, you have a bump in growth, right? Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that every time you hit this moment, you look back on your life and you don't want to repeat and stay stagnant, you know, that idea of looking back for five years, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's going to look different every time. Like, it is, is it always going to have to do something with work? Or is it going to have to do something with, like, you or your relationships or the way you see the world? Or do you think it's always going to be related to your job? Um, I grow... It's very rare. Do I grow sometimes? I grow best when there's conflict or challenges. Like, that's usually what I grow out of. So I, I'll say recently, without any details, I had a lot of growth or I had a lot of conflict with a particular person and scenario involving this person and it was out of that conflict that I had to reorganize or reanalyze or rethink of a lot of different things in order to kind of like make sense of things that had happened and to like move on from that event and it'll usually be through big moments of conflict in my life that I'm forced to kind of like reevaluate or change things basically I think those are what I grow best from um, there's a game that I used to play called Starcraft you ever played before? No, but you remember I did a guy who liked playing it, so that's why I know what it is. <laughs> There's an interesting concept where when you play a game, if you play a game, you win the game. You're not really getting much better at it because you did everything right and you're good. But if you play and you start losing towards something, well, now that you've lost, now there's something to improve, right? There's either a different, I won't get into details, but like, yeah, you have to improve something. Um, so I find that in life, as long as you're doing really well and you're not presented with much adversity and everything's going good, it's pretty hard to find big instigators to change because why would you change up a lot of the formula that seems to be working well? So normally there has right. to be some instigator that comes along where it's like, hey, here's something that you could do, or here's something you could have, or here's a challenge that you can't meet and you're not able to do that now so do you like do you avoid that and kind of like carry on the other path and keep doing what you're doing or do you reconfigure or change some of your fundamental beliefs or views of the world in order to overcome that challenge um, and ideally i'm hoping that i'm always going to be the person that wants to rise and exceed meet or exceed the threshold to beat whatever that challenge is and then that's kind of what's happened over the past like a couple months i guess love it here's the question okay when you're making this change obviously i, I okay 100 agree right mm -hmm. this happens in layers of life so right now, I think it could happen in your job, it happened in your personal life, happen yeah. in your own, like right now, would you say it's happening in your business life? Cause that's what you're changing from the outside. That's what I'm observing. Kind of, so <clears throat> for business life, this is what I mean when I say that like everything is like abstracted from other things. Um, yeah. For business life, there, the change is that like, I wanna do something a little bit more than just streaming. Um, mm -hmm. Like um, I, think I, can, I think I can do more. Um, but that comes from a fundamental re-understanding of like i think a person's obligation to the world and obligation to themselves mm -hmm. so prior to this i would say that like your obligations are obviously contractual ones like if you've made a contract or an agreement with somebody if you have a child if you've got a wife or whatever like these are things you should honor obviously um and then like you should try to make yourself as happy as possible that's like an obvious thing like these are the two i would have said that those are the two obligations you have in life but now that i've kind of like rethought about that i'm like well hold on i think that there is a third obligation we can speak of i think that every person has like sets of talents or things that they can do exceedingly well and i think that the world is a actually like a fundamentally worse place if people don't explore those virtues or those talents or those gifts that they have. So I think everybody kind of owes it. I think it's like morally, you have an imperative to explore those special gifts that you have in the biggest way possible. So because I've kind of like changed my view on that, well, now I go downstream or upstream yeah. or downstream, I guess. Yeah, now I apply that to my, my working life. It's like, okay, well, I can be a video game streamer for my whole life and that's fine. I can do that. I make a ton of money. I have a lot of fun. It's cool. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, there's probably other stuff that I can do even greater that maybe not everybody else can do and I can like engage with it in a unique or exceptional manner and why would I not? It seems like I'm like worsening the world and myself to not have that engagement with the world I live in. Does that make sense? You, totally. 100% makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, I think my journey just, it went into the world but then it went outside of the world and earlier I think it was still that Devin guy because I listened to a few videos today so I can't remember mm -hmm. and he said something like, um, oh shoot, wait, I just lost it. Oh no. He said... Oh, he said introspection is sort of selfish because you have to be alone to introspect, right? And I think it's... <laughs> okay, now we know why she doesn't like Devin. Um, okay, how am I... Let me listen to that one more time. Um, 
Okay, now this is making sense. Now this is making sense because Britney stops everything in introspection. Introspection is the end all be all of everything because she started outside working in the normal world and then retreated inside. And now she thinks that's the solution to everything. Steven has done the opposite, being super duper inside of himself and realizing that's a selfish thing to do and it's much better to go outside. So they've had opposite transitions. She's going to feel like he's making a mistake changing his hedonistic approach because she came from the other thing and thinks that it's wrong and she thinks that she's lived through that so now she knows something that maybe he doesn't know and then separate from that Devin Nash saying that the thing that she thinks is the end all be all and far more important than interacting with the outside interacting with the inside um, is selfish well, now she's going to have a problem with that because she thinks that's the ultimate solution because she did it the other way and she thinks it's not worth it anymore. Um, okay, let me let me listen one more time to this Devin Nash thing. It's sort of selfish. Oh, no. He said, oh, he said introspection is sort of selfish because you have to be alone to introspect, right? And I think it's interesting when I watch people be introspective or extrospective, but then they end up putting their energy into the world as an abstract concept because that seems really inefficient to me. So I'm, I guess I'm asking you these questions because I'm trying to figure out like, why would you make this decision? But then it would make sense if, if it fulfilled some sort of like egocentric focus or like some legacy you're doing or some. Gosh, why not do both? Um, I don't know. Let's sort of like, one. this is what I think is just correct morally. You know, why wouldn't you go into yourself? Like, why would you give more of yourself to the world when the world has just like not appreciated it as much as they could have? Because I think that's, I think that is. Now we get to her baggage. Um, okay. Hold on. I I think very differently from Brittany. So I'm just trying to take a moment to really live in this for a second. Um, because when I hear this, my immediate thought is like, oh, she has baggage where she feels like she, for a time, put a lot out in the world and the world just did not repay her. And her conclusion at the end of that was to withdraw and be focused on herself. And that's why she did it. Um, and I think that my perspective is there is a challenge where often the most right things we can do are the things other people do the least amount of. Um, so, uh, oh, I want the tablet for this. I hope that it's calibrated correctly because I do want to kind of draw this out a little bit. I feel like this is a really interesting concept to talk about. Um, let me make sure that the tablet is working well. Good enough for me. Um, and let me move the microphone a bit here. And then let me make sure that on my thing here, you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, oh, wait, I don't have to do that. I can, um, oops. Uh, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Okay, cool. Uh, everything is working appropriately, which is uh, fantastic. So I think that there are, um, if we're talking about what people do, um, the thing that most people do, whoops, which is good, all these people do, right? I'll put a lightning bolt because it's like our verb. All these people do. Um, the thing that a lot of people do, the more people that do it, 
the less uh, value there is in or less import there is in doing the thing. And to represent this, I'll put shekels. Oh, come on, tablet. Right, the less uh, value there is to that thing. Um, and then we'll put these to make it nice and shiny. Okay, so as more people do something, there is less like societal value or import in that specific decision. Um, if few people do it, if the number of people is few that are doing the thing that needs to be done, right? Because we're assuming uh, this is the good thing that you could do. If fewer people are doing the good thing, which I'll just do this again, our little lightning bolt, then I think that the value of that thing goes way up. Right? The value, and I feel like import is more of what I mean. The value or the import of the thing is higher. So if we look at an example of this, uh, we could talk about holding open a door, okay? So holding open maybe a door for people. for maybe little people, right? Little people need doors held open. A lot of people are doing this, probably not super important that you do it. If we talk about um, something else, like going vegan, right? If we talk about going vegan, So few people are doing it, and we know it's something, ultimately, if we look forward in time, that all of us should be doing, then that's really valuable because we need more people to do it. It will lead to a cultural change of more people doing the thing that we know that we all probably need to be doing, and it's going to be good. Um, and I think it's more valuable for you to make a habit out of being vegan or going vegan or not eating meat, it's more valuable to be doing that than it would be for you to be, uh, you know, holding doors open for people or something like that. Um, so I think when fewer people are doing it, or like Martin Luther King saying no to the black shit, right? Or <laughs> saying no to like, uh, you know, uh, oppression and whatever. So if we have Martin Luther King here, Okay, at the time that he did that, that's way more valuable than I think it is people preaching the exact same thing today. It was more valuable for Martin Luther King to do it then. And it was important for Martin Luther King to do it then because it led to the now where we've made progress on this thing in the way that I hope vegans are able to with their decisions. Or it's really, really important to uh, maybe um, support something like socialism um, now than it is to maybe support it in the future if we move towards an economy that's going to be like more socialistic or whatever. I, I think few of us really could say that socialism is bad. And if you do, I just disagree with you. Um, I think it's important. It's more important to do those things when few people are doing them or when, or when, what Stephen is saying, when few people can do that thing. So maybe for instance, you are, putting your brain to work when your brain is really, really good. Maybe I'll put a plus in this brain here. When you're doing like a really, really good thing with your brain that other people couldn't do. Like maybe Albert Einstein doing math. 
Maybe we'll make this Einstein. I don't know. I don't know what Einstein's hair looks like. <laughs> it's so bad because my, my tablet isn't registering like my, my pressure sensitivity properly. Um, so it's way better to be Einstein doing this thing that only he can do um, than it would be for maybe somebody without that ability to do it or at a time when there aren't people doing that. Um, so I think it's the value goes up the fewer people that are able to or are doing the thing is. Um, there's actually a really good video about this, um, kind of touching on this topic. I would highly recommend to you guys. Let me go ahead and find it real quick. Um, it is two seconds. Um, link for YouTube there are okay um I'm going to switch scenes real quick and then I'll, I'll respond to what all you guys are typing so I'm not ignoring you no I am ignoring you on purpose actually um but uh it's because I want to talk about it later um this isn't the scene that I want uh fuck I think I've I've ruined the scene that I normally use whatever I'll 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 use this. That's fine. Um, there is this video, um, which is uh, called There Are Vast Tragedies Happening Right Now That We Are Failing to See. And basically it talks about if we imagine that there are transparent monsters in the world, those transparent monsters are tragedies of vast proportions that only very few people can recognize. History is filled with examples of such tragedies and our time is no different. So... If we are thinking about uh, a monster that only you are seeing, like with slavery, back in the day when slavery was really, really popular and everybody had slaves, there was a lot of reasoning going on to why we had slaves. And even smart people weren't really looking at why that would be wrong, right? And the people that do see that as an invisible monster that nobody else is noticing that's harming the world, if you see the invisible monster, you need to be working on improving or bringing attention to that invisible monster so that you can fix it. If we look at something like factory farming, even if you're not vegan, I'm not vegan, I see it's a big fucking problem. If I could redesign the world, I wouldn't allow it to happen. I think we all know that it's like an evil and cruel thing that probably shouldn't be happening. Even if you don't believe in the sentience of animals or whatever, I would hope that you kind of see it as a problem. And it's an invisible problem that more and more of us are starting to see. And so we should probably start working on fixing that so that we can move on to the next invisible monster that we need to start fixing. So this talks a little bit about that. Um, and th there's another video in this series um, in our previous that, that kind of builds on this uh, called Can We Make the Future a Million Years from Now Go Better? And what this is doing is take, given that we have invisible monsters, invisible evils that a lot of people don't see or aren't working to improve or solve, given that we have that now, it's your obligation as somebody that sees it to fix it because if you look a million years from now at what your individual contribution to starting early on fixing the problem is and you extrapolate that out, you could have a positive impact that extends beyond your life such that it's difficult for us to comprehend. So there are certain problems, invisible problems or otherwise, that we could see that will exist in the future. Um, like, we know at some point the planet's not going to be habitable anymore. We know that at some point we want to expand beyond this planet. So what are the problems that lie between where we are now and colonizing the galaxy or being able to settle on other planets so we can hedge our bets if the Earth is destroyed, right? That's a, that's a big thing that we should probably be working towards. So if you can contribute to that right now, 
If you can Elon Musk it by building better rockets that are reusable and more economic so that more people can get involved in space, the individual contributions of Elon Musk starting that rocket company and doing those things now, when we look a million years from now, that individual decision and the decisions following that to invest and develop that company is going to be worth a lot because he's going to save a bunch of time and improve us, you know, moving forward in the future. Now, you can dislike Elon Musk for a bunch of reasons. It's just an example of like, we see that we have a problem and we probably want to fix it for the future so we can do things. Um, so like, we know that we want to hit expanding the galaxy and whatever. If we start early, the exponential returns on that are going to be huge, right? Um, where are we here? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's another thing. Decarbonization. Um, yeah, so I would highly recommend these two videos. I think they play off of each other really, really well. Um, and it's from a channel called Rational Animations. Uh, the second video's title is, Can We Make a Future a Million Years From Now Go Better? So um, th that's my whole rant. I wanted to go into this a little bit because it's a lot of ideas I have floating in my head. And rather than explain it to you kind of like offhandedly, I kind of want to point you towards my primary sources that I think do a really, really good job of explaining the concepts. And hopefully with all these little ingredients, you have a similar kitchen in your brain as me. And if I tell you what the ingredients are and the proportions that they are, you'll come away with a similar conclusion. Your dish should be, should be relatively similar. So that, that's what I'm trying to do here. Rather than just explain to you what the dish is like, I'm going to give you the ingredients and hopefully you can mix those at home and uh, you know come away with similar results. Um, that being said, we'll, we'll jump back to this. Um, his contributions towards spaceflight outweigh his Twitter stupidity. I would agree, but you know, that's, uh, so yeah, that, that's that, um, wow. This scene is completely awful. Sorry. I put you through that. <laughs> I didn't see how bad that scene looked before I, uh, I did that there. Um, anywho, uh, that, that's all that. Um, I will put the notes back on the screen and we'll kind of get back to that. But yeah, I, I just wanted to have that tangent because this is something I feel really strongly about when it comes to empathetic language. I think that we have a huge problem right now with people not being empathetic, not working on communicating at a time when like we have the birth of interconnectedness across the entire globe in a way that's unprecedented with the internet. And I think it is of paramount importance that we all improve the way that we listen to each other and that we communicate with each other. Because if we don't work on that, the internet could be the beginning of the end for humanity. Because if we interconnect in this way and we're not good at parsing information or what people are saying, and in general, everybody is bad at communicating, which compounds on that issue then we're going to be let off in different directions that have nothing to do with what people are communicating about their lives. And it tends towards negative emotions and stuff. And that'll lead to like bad relationships between countries, racism, phob phobias of all sorts and kinds. And it'll just be generally negative for everybody. And that applies to every single person about every single other group whether it's Nazis or trans people or Democrats or Republicans or far right people or far left people or whatever. Black people, brown people, white people, yellow people, all the peoples, purple people, uh, purple people eaters. Um, if we don't get good at communicating with each other, this blessing is going to be a curse. And it's really hard for me because everything is rallied against me. Because many, many people are doing the bad thing and I don't get any benefit from doing the good thing right now, but we need to do the good thing now because that's the only way that more people are going to do the good thing in the future. So when somebody says that I'm clout sharking or whatever, because I let Darius on the show to talk about something we were already going to talk about to demonstrate how you would handle somebody empathetically and to be kind to Darius... I'm not really looking 
at the 15 minutes after a video where you're going to comment something negative about me because you think I'm clout sharking. It's really easy to get distracted by it. I'm not perfect, but I am looking at like years ahead. I'm looking at the future and I'm thinking whatever negative optics I get from doing this with this guy, I'll take it. I'll take it on the chin because I have to live this for people so that people see it and people copy it and people do it. And if you're at the point where you're calling me out for snaky shit and whatever, you're probably not the person who I'm trying to like convert and get to jump over the two steps to do the right thing. You're probably way before that. So like, I understand most people are not going to be at that point. I'm trying to push the people that are really close to considering that. And I'm trying to show them, hey, you'll deal with all the bad people. You'll deal with all the people that will shit on you, that'll walk all over you, that'll make it very difficult to be empathetic and to be a good communicator and to do the right thing. But you have to make that decision, even if it comes with sacrifices, because we need to culturally move away from behaving that way. And as soon as we have a critical mass of people, a solid community of people that are consistently behaving in the right way, we suddenly have leverage and power over the bad people. We can exclude them, we can ostracize them, or we can make it very uncomfortable for them to continue to be that way. And I, I just think we have to work towards it. We have to work towards it. We have to increase the number of people doing the right thing. And Steven's doing that right now. He's getting so much shit for not wanting to label Nick and wanting to talk to Nick and trying to be compassionate and trying to have empathy for other people. And he'll lose a lot for it. But we need to do it, right? That's also why I don't, I don't feel personally slighted that there's no credit or whatever for this change happening in the exact same period that I started talking with him about these concepts. That's not important to me because it won't be important in the long run. What's important is that destiny converts to this ideology and starts approaching things in that way, in a consistent manner, in front of tons of people so that more people start behaving in that way. It's a success and it won't matter 100 years from now who, who convinced them to do that or who put forward the arguments first or whatever else, that's all petty bullshit. We have to focus on converting each and every person to doing the right thing right now so that 100, 200, 1,000 years from now, we can look and see that starting early really helped because it's going to push everything forward. Um, and, and that's where I'm at with things. So like, I don't often talk about this, but like, that's why I'm taking this opportunity and why I'm going to continue streaming, even if I, it's not a money-making endeavor anymore, because I can do this and have some slight benefit to the world by showing you I'm trying to live a life that's more or less in line with this thing that will be better for everybody. And that, that brings us back to what he's talking about when he says that like the benefit to society, the personal fulfillment you get from doing the right thing. It makes a richer, better human experience for everybody. And we want extraordinary people capable of acting on these unique abilities to do that rather than doing the easier thing and not doing it, right? Um, and I'm not perfect. I'm an asshole off stream and, you know, that, that happens, right? I fuck up. I fuck up all the time. We all fuck up. But like the, the focus has to be on just like doing better every single time. And you're gonna fuck up and that's fine. You're not gonna be Jesus, right? But you know, you aim at the moon, even if you miss, you land among the stars. That, that, that's, that's gotta be the direction that we head in. Uh, we have to kind of invest in this human drive to make the world a better place. And I agree with all that and I'm happy he's doing it. So anywho. Is there always room for negotiation and mutual benefit? I don't know what any of this is about. I don't really care. Um, you're nice to me. That's all that matters. Giga Chad. Yes, my my lovely cat friend. Um, okay, e enough enough with me uh, saying all this nonsense. Let, let's get back into our video. But for real, consider that, dude. Consider that the next time you have the ability to do the right thing, just do it because more of us need to do it. And if you see the right thing as being something that nobody else does, take solace in the fact that you doing that is more valuable because so few people would do it. Do that. Um, like there is this lady that lives underneath me who every day asks people for water. She's always asking people for water. 
And a lot of people ignore her. And I ignored her because I didn't know what, what she was saying in Romanian until like I started to piece together what she's asking for. That she was making hand signals and I see people giving her water. So I went out and I bought a big ass pack of like six huge things of water and I brought it to her and I gave that to her because it, that money doesn't mean anything to me for water. It's, it's easy. And if she needs water, she needs water. And if she's going to have to gamble on somebody giving her a little bottle of water every day, like it would just be better if somebody gave her a shit ton of water. So now every time I ask her and I go and talk to her, I try to use Google Translate and I'm like, do you still have the water? Are you out of water? I will go buy you more water because it's better that I just take the opportunity to do the best thing I could do in this situation than to hope that like every person who's probably going to do the wrong thing does a slightly good thing. It's probably better that me who's willing to do the, the massive good thing, as good as I could do it, to just do that. And then we don't have to rely on the charity of every single small person who's unlikely to give the charity, right? Um, so just look for those opportunities in your life and try and do the right thing. Um, that, that's what I would say with all of this. And it doesn't just apply to language or how to talk to people. It's ever present. There are tons of these invisible monsters. And if you see the monster, there is some obligation on you to address that and to try to remedy that problem in whatever way that you can. Okay. Within reason. Right. Um, so yeah, I, she needs water. That's rough. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. She needs water. She asks for water like every day. Um, so I just, uh, like when I realized she was asking for water, I went up to my room and I grabbed all the things of water that I had. And then the next day I gave her a big pack of the waters that I, that I buy all the time. Um, and I just, I check in with her. Uh, and, uh, in the other day, the ambulance came and like took her away and stuff. So I don't know what's going on with her health, but like if she's reliant on other people for something as basic as water, it can't be all that good. And if an ambulance is coming to take her away, then I, I can't imagine her health is doing too well. Um, but she's out there asking for it all the time. So anyways, um, let's, I, we're way off track. All right, let's continue. It's like the best version of yourself. It, like the best version of Einstein was the guy that contributed everything he did to the world. The best version of Hitler or Oppenheimer or any like fantastic figure, Alexander the Great, like the best versions of themselves can't be divorced from the engagement that they had with the world, right? Only if the world is the one judging, but if you're judging your own life, does it matter? Um, like, what, like for some people matter like they would rather just thank you um let me try to re-listen to what she said here twenty dollars alex thank you I'll buy more water for the old lady with that one. <laughs> She's going to use all that water to buy drugs. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Um, thank you for the $20, Alex. I do appreciate that. It's very nice of you. Um, likewise, you know, it, think about who you're supporting with streaming. Um, this will be my little shill. Please let me have my shill for two seconds. Support the streamers who are doing the thing that you think everybody should be doing. I think regardless of the entertainment aspect, like if you think everybody should be doing what IRI is doing, use your Twitch Prime on IRI. Even if you don't find IRI as entertaining as, I don't know, what's another political commentator that goes crazy? Um, the quartering or something. Um, Think smartly about how you're spending your money. Is it better to spend your money on the thing that's most entertaining? Or is it better to spend your money on the thing that needs to be done? Um, that's at least how I look at it. Um, that's why I personally support IRI above all the other political content creators is because I think they need to be doing what he's doing and I want him to be successful and to drive out everybody else. That's what I want. I want IRI to succeed absolutely in the political streaming space. So I financially support IRI. Um, and I don't 
financially support people based on how entertaining they are because I don't think that's a good metric for like how my money should be contributing going forward in time. I think it should go towards the people doing the right thing, not the people doing the funny thing or the entertaining thing, but that's totally up to you guys. Um, if you feel like the channel is something you want to do more of, invest. It will help me continue to do it, okay? Especially if I keep this job because then it'll just go back into the channel and it'll go into doing more of this and make it more appealing to people because unfortunately that's the metric by which people judge whether or not they contribute to something. Um, what did she say here? Um, what did she say here? That's what I need to figure out. Does it matter? Only if the world is the one judging, but if you're judging your own life, does it matter? Um, like, what, like for some people, matter, like they would rather just like have children, have like grandchildren, like talk about the legacy, like having all those babies is quite a legacy. But you're saying you, Steven, won't be fulfilled by just being a normal person. So you're looking for something extraordinary to do, right? Sure, but I think that the, when we engage with the world, other like humans don't exist in a vacuum, right? Like mm -hmm. everything we do is gonna affect other people to some extent. So mm -hmm. if you're engaging in an exceptional or great with the world, then other people are probably going to be impacted by that, right? by like exceptional mm -hmm. people or great people. Um, so if you have the ability to pursue something in an exceptional or great manner, it's gonna be stuff that is like impacting other people to some extent anyway, yeah? Yeah, I think for me, I just think about my my direct imp, like six feet radius and then I go, yeah, but I'm not shitting on yours like that's the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the same reason why I got confused when the people were like, why Mr. Girl takes me so seriously or Lav or anybody? Cause I'm just like, why? And then it's like, maybe, maybe it's this cause I don't have this. Whatever you're saying right now, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that is. Like I know sure, I think is, they I see themselves as like everybody. My past self, mm -hmm. but I don't get it now. Um, I guess like the difference is that like maybe you see everybody as like individual little like puddles, mm. and you kind of exist in your puddle and you do your thing. Um, whereas other people. Now he is bridging the gap between the way that they're speaking, which is good. People might view all of us are in the same lake, and when you put a drop in that... Oops. ...lake, you ripple out and you affect everything else around you, even if it's a... small sure. thing right yeah um like every, i do think that's true yeah well but if yeah, you think that's true that's usually I, where their arguments are coming from it's why you need to be but aware that's of them, because right? i only think that's true um i think we are all like all these bubbles mm -hmm. together and then we're all one massive like there's the american bubble then there's the florida bubble then there's the like florida yeah that's Miami probably the better bubble, understanding a more sophisticated Asian. understanding of those bubbles is probably going to be that like it's not like you're either in this bubble and then you go to that bubble or you go to this bubble it's probably more just like i'm in bubble like 7d like i'm in bubble one that's also in bubble two that's in bubble three and four and five and then yes. set, bubble seven has yeah. subsection e in miami for this group of people that, right that's probably more how it goes yes. right yeah there's tons yes. of different groups here yeah Exactly. So you're making a conscientious decision to interact and impact bubbles. Well, I am trying to make the conscientious decision to exist, to just let people know I'm a person that happens to be alive, but I have no deep, great desire to like change or shift the world because I just don't think it matters in the way that could fulfill me as a person. What fulfills me as a person. I feel like she gets so close. She gets so close and then gets selfish so quickly. Um, but I feel like she constantly leaves these doors open in ways that other debate people don't to insert your ideas into her ideology. Like here, like agreeing that the bubbles overlap, like oh, wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. It's like when a cop goes to kick down a door and they realize it was unlocked the whole time. Because um, normally people will fight hella hard and then it's like that on every fucking point and it's exhausting. Her, it's not like that. Um, and fulfillment leaves us an open door to knock on where if we can convince her that it can be fulfilling to benefit the bigger bubble, we might have a way in. So like... She constantly has these like 
ways into her ideology. And I feel like we don't, I rarely see us fight a ton on inserting or rectifying the difference between the ideologies. Um, and if there are problems, I find that a lot of the time the blame could be put on the other person because they, they throw up their hands and get frustrated on the surface of what she said rather than engage with it. Um, like when she says, well, like I'm just being a person and, um, you know, I just don't see how like you care that much about me, but you do you Habibi cause we're all human and we're all going to human and I'm here living in my bubble and in your bubble, you care about like all the other bubbles, which is like totally fine. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying like from my perspective in my bubble, I just like don't care. Right. Cause like I care about me and fulfilling me in, inside my six foot radius and you think that I shouldn't do that. And that's totally fine. Cause from your perspective in your bubble, it's that way. And from my perspective in mine, it's this way. Um, but I really don't think that I'm like the thing that you're saying that I am. Um, and then you get really frustrated cause you're like, well, no, you're an influencer. You're a content creator. I mean, it's in your name. You're impacting people and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, no, you don't have to, you don't have to be a dick. You can focus on what she's saying and use the ins that she's giving you to, to carry the conversation forward. If you keep doing that and you don't address what she's saying, you're not going to make any progress with her. And it's not like she makes it super difficult to make the progress with her here. Um, is she, is she disconnected from her impact on the world? And why does she proselytizing? I, I don't care about that question. That's a, a silly question because it, it, it just doesn't move us forward. Um, like you're trying to sow doubt in her ideology rather than trying to take her ideology and jujitsu it into doing the right thing. Um, and I don't think that's an approach that I like personally. Um, I don't like the, well, <laughs> if you believe in X, Y, Z, then why then do you do A, B, C? Seems kind of incongruent. Like, I don't think that's a good approach to her or to people in general. Um, like, unless you really do mean to piss them off because you're trying to point out an incongruence in what they're saying. I, I just never think that that's a good approach to people, but maybe. Person is talking and meeting cool people and having good conversations uh -huh. and like having a family and raising babies. Like that's, I'm a traditionalist in that way at heart, but not for everyone, just for me. Sure. So I guess I'm just fascinated. Yeah, I don't think, I guess, I, I think that like when I speak about like worldly things, it's just because of like the platform I have and where I'm at. Like if I wasn't a streamer, um, and I, let's say that somehow I was going on this exact same journey, but I wasn't a streamer and I was like doing my personal stuff that I'd want to do. Like all these same, same thoughts might instead be like, um, like uh, let's say every day after stream, I play my piano and it's fun and I enjoy it, right? Well, maybe at some point in my life, I'm like, you know what? Um, I went to school, wanted a minor composition. I can write formal pieces. Like maybe I owe it to myself and everything to like push the boundaries of that a bit more rather than just kind of like goofing off. I should actually like sit down and write formal pieces. Like that would be how it might come out in a personal sense. Not in the like, I want to be the next great like jazz musician or piano player or Keith Jarrett or whatever. Like I don't want to be like the best or whatever. It's just, I have a talent and I owe it to myself and, and the world, everybody owes it to the world to pursue those talents to their max. Um, just and he's repeating himself. Fuck, he missed this. That's so fucking unfortunate. <sighs> He had such a good in with the fulfill thing because you could talk about how it could be fulfilling to consider this, but now he's just repeating what he's already said. And that's, and granted we're going line by line. So it's not the same as having the conversation in real life, but I don't think repeating himself is the way to go here because it, it already didn't land like over and over when he said it before. Because he's, he's literally just repeating this. And then she said this. And I wonder if she'll just repeat that. And then we completely wasted all this time. Uh, let's see how it goes. Because it makes like life so much richer for everybody. Like in yeah, a society where everybody- the second part that I'm annoyed with. It's the first part I love. Like the second part, the whole like, you owe it to yourself, I'm like fire. You owe it to the world, I'm like, mm, skirt, skirt. The, so if every single person lived a hedonistic life, our planet would suck shit. But if every single totally. person- Hedonism is my worst sure. nightmare. But if sure. every single person pursued the talents that they were like the most suited towards and they made those contributions to the world, our world is an infinitely richer place. But she can agree with this while not obligating herself to do it because she, 
we're going to get back to fulfill. Hopefully we get back to that. And some of the hugest achievements and the best things that have existed in the world have come off the backs of individuals pursuing those types of talents. So the question is like, is there some moral good there? Is there some imperative that as humans, that are humans, that are going to human with other humans, that all exist in society, like, is there some sort of collective, like synergistic bond that we have with each other? We kind of owe it to ourselves to push the borders of like, or push the boundaries of what we're capable of doing? Or is it okay to just sit and be like, ah, fuck it. If a doctor, if a physician retires and he moves to some African village and there's some like poor dying Sudanese child and you know, he's like, oh God, like blah, blah, blah. And the doctor's like, you know, I could cure this person but i don't fucking know like fuck it i can just like chill and do my shit like does that doctor owe it to that village to be the doctor or could he just be like ah oh, fuck it i don't care like i'm retired like i'm chill i feel like if you would have asked me two years ago i'd have been like oh uh yeah like he's chill he can pursue that like that's what makes him happy just like he should be able to do that but i think now when i look i'm like well you know what he has a particular how do you keep an ear for openings like that in live conversations when they use your language yes um what you have to do is you have to look at what people's like um I'm going to bust out the uh, the whiteboard again. <laughs> I'm going to bust out the whiteboard. Um, one second. Let me switch scenes here uh, to art because I don't have my, my buttons set up right now. Oh. I, I do think this is important to draw out for us here. Um, okay, let's F11 this. Let's go to here. Let's start a new page. Get rid of the other one. Okay. Okay. Um, if somebody says, you know, uh, sentences, they have a lot of filler, okay? So um, if somebody says like, well, you know, there's X, Y, Z, and I think this and this and blah, 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 and I feel, uh, you know, I feel like A and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, I know you mentioned A, B, C, blah, 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 but I feel like B about A, B, C, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I think X is like feel, you know, uh, B and blah, blah, blah. And I think Y is like feel, uh, you know, uh, C and period. Um, and maybe then they say like, uh, but Z, Z makes me feel A, okay? And let's say that, uh, let, let's break this down. So when people are talking, what I'm thinking is I'm chunking up their sentences. So this is what I said. I said X, Y, Z, okay? And they're repeating it back to me. Cool, that's great. Um, and they said that they're feeling like A about that, okay? So uh, maybe this is bad. Maybe they, they feel bad about that whole statement. Like, oh, okay. So now I know that they disagree with me about the whole thing. But th And then they, they say their thing, which is A, B, C, and then they said that they feel B, which we'll say is feeling good about that. Like, okay, so they got A, B, C, I have X, Y, Z. There's absolutely no links between these. That's fine. Let me keep listening to what they're saying. They said X. Oh, cool. That's my thing. Okay. And they said that they feel B about X. Whoa. They said a positive thing about the thing that I said. That's cool. I'm going to keep that in mind because that, that, that's good to know. That's good to know. And they said about why the other thing that I said, they feel C, which is a little bit weird. I don't know how to feel about that. Maybe that's worth exploring. That's a brand new uh, you know, uh, a thing for me. And then they say for Z, they feel A. So that's another blue and uh, they're feeling bad about it. Okay. Well, now comes interpreting how to do this. So I should probably, hmm, we'll make it like this. I should probably avoid Z because they feel bad about it. Um, I should probably uh, avoid saying X, Y, Z the exact same way because there's something in there that they don't like. They definitely don't like Z. Um, so I'll keep that in mind. They definitely don't like Z. And I know that because Z is here. And uh, for ABC, they feel good. Um, so I'm keeping in mind all of ABC, I can work with that. That's all great. So I can speak in terms of ABC and I should be good. And for X, they also felt good about it. So I can't use Z, I can use X, and Y is unique. I don't really know what's going on with Y here because they felt this way, which I don't really understand. So now I have a few options. I could either double down on the thing that's positive that both of us care about, I could argue with them about the thing that's negative that I disagree about, or I can explore the unique thing, right? And I'll go ahead and write these out. So 
the unique thing we can explore. The bad thing we can argue. And the blue thing we can agree. In debate, a lot of the time what we're doing is we're choosing to do argue. Because if we can do argue and the conclusion can be that they're wrong, then we look good. I don't really care about that. I don't think that's usually what you want to go for. If you can get agreement, you can get a foot in the door to do other things in the conversation that will be positive for you. And you could figure out the edges of where you agree. And that will tell me even more about where disagreements are. Because, you know, it, I've talked before about how it's almost like if we're all in the dark, right? And we have, uh, let's do this. If we're all in the dark and we have a bunch of different points in the dark and we're looking at it from different angles. So let's say that my eyeball is looking at it from this angle and your eyeball is looking at it from this angle. Then we're going to see different pictures from my angle. I'm seeing that they connect like this because I'm seeing these points connect like that, right? And from your perspective, you're seeing that they connect way, way like isosceles, like way, way far out because you're seeing these connect. And maybe you don't see the point here that I'm bringing up. Maybe that's this unique thing because you haven't heard about it, so you have no opinion on this point here and you agree with the connection between these two points because we see them exactly the same, but where you disagree is in the connection between these two points, right? So we disagree between these two, we can agree between these two, and these this is completely unique over here. So you have a few different options. This is how I'm breaking down conversations, and then I make decisions based on whether I want to explore agreement argument or something unique entirely. When somebody is really, really, really stubborn, you probably want to go with agreement or something brand new that they have no opinion like really formed about. If someone is very agreeable, you could probably go with arguing and with agreeing like in equal part. If somebody is like indifferent about something, then you probably want to go with the unique thing because they haven't figured out how they believe about the thing. So everybody's different. This is how I'm chunking out what people are telling me. I'm looking for the terms that we're using, yes, but I'm also looking for the feelings associated with those terms. And if you're introducing, oh, I feel this way about B because of A, because of A, oh, well, cool. Now I know even more. So... Term A has some relationship to term X, and instead of using X, which might be a turnoff, I could use A, right? And, and now I have interchangeable terms. So um, th this is like what I'm looking at for openings in a conversation. So when both of them, if we go back to, uh, if we go back to our notes here, and I enlarge this, when she talks about fulfill, and up here, I think we have fulfill somewhere else in here, don't we? Oh, here we are. Uh, we have it here. We have fulfill again here. And I think that we had fulfill in this part here. Um, yes, we have it here. And it was green. He repeated it over and over again. We have fulfill again here. We have a unique term that we can use between us. And the... And the fact that that fulfillment can be reductively hedonistic, that we can reduce it to being hedonistic, ah, well, now we have the connection here. She, even if she doesn't think everybody should be hedonistic, her worldview is pretty hedonistic, okay? And that fulfillment can be a hedonistic fulfillment, and we could talk about that with her. And so we miss that opportunity to, like, close all that gap when she's talking about fulfilling here. Um, and, and that, and she says it would make sense 
if it's to fulfill that, right? A positive thing with this opening word here. So I see this as the X that we have some positive about, so that's where I would focus. But instead, Stephen repeats himself. Instead of doing any of that, Stephen, to go back to the drawing board here, he just repeats X, Y, Z again, which she already said she has a problem with Z. So we're, we're going to get that she doesn't like Z, which she said afterwards. And then maybe if we're lucky, she mentions like agreement on X again. But even if she does, it's nothing new. We already know that she feels positively about the fulfillment thing. Let's look at the um, let's look at the text here. Let, let's see what what actually happens. So, um, he says all this, and and she says she doesn't like the owe it to the world thing. So instead of getting an agreement, we just talk about the part that she already disagreed with previously. And so, like w when I get frustrated with how conversations are going, it's often these kinds of missed opportunities that I get frustrated about, and I don't hold it fully against the person unless it's egregious. It happens in conversations that you miss these things or you don't see them or you just frankly disagree with the way that I look at things. That's totally fine. Um, but, um, you know, that that's how I'm breaking stuff down. That's how I'm looking for openings in live conversation. Oftentimes, I'm sitting here and like writing stuff down as well and writing down words that they repeat. I'm trying to get those variables in there so that I can deliver my points in a way that they understand and yada, yada, yada. Um, but that, that, that's how I break it down. Big, um, big uh, uh, rant there. But I think you guys, for the most part, I think, I think a lot of people like the rant. So I, I'm, I'm trying to do them every time I see the opportunity to. And I like ranting. Anywho, let's continue set of talents and gifts that he can like put into the world, not even in a grand way, but just in, for these groups of people. And I, and I think he should pursue that. I think it'd be morally virtuous. There's an imperative that he, he ought to pursue those things, I would say. Mm, I'd want to encourage people to be- And look at what he did. <sighs> this- she doesn't like this. And then he just repeats it, right? Like, and we're just, we're not going to get anywhere with that. Um, but, but, but we keep doing it. And uh, that's when I get frustrated. Their best, like their version, like do your 110%, right? Like whatever your version of 110% is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like the idea that the world is the motivator, but maybe people are externally motivated in that way. So I'm just like in my own head thinking like, I still don't see what the world has to do with this, but I like the idea of the world being impacted. I like the idea of holding yourself accountable and being your best version. That's how I feel right now. I'm in this, like, mm -hmm. I'm in my little hustle mode. I was like, okay, Brittany, less weed, less masturbation. And for those of you that uh, were here during the weed conversation, it seems she's acutely aware that the weed is an opportunity cost because the weed is somehow in the way of her accomplishing things in her life, which uh, is of no surprise. I like the idea of the world being impacted. I like the idea of holding your people are externally motivated in that way. So I'm just like in my own head thinking like, I still don't see what the world has to do with this, but I like the idea of the world being impacted. I like the idea of holding yourself accountable. Fuck, she talks so fucking- 110%, right? Like whatever your version of 110% is. Mm -hmm like their version like do your 110 percent, right like whatever your version of 110 percent is mm -hmm. um i don't like the idea that the world is the motivator but maybe people are externally motivated in that way so i'm just like in my own head thinking like i still don't see what the world has to do with this but i like the idea of the world being impacted i like the idea of holding yourself accountable and being your best version that's how i feel right now i'm in this like mm -hmm. i'm in my little hustle mode i was like okay Brittany, less weed less masturbation focus mm -hmm. <laughs> let's focus on work and well, work yeah when i say owe it to the world um Oh shit! It's really hard to it's really hard to put this into words. I'm making cringy fucking spiritual analogies. <laughs> um, when I say "owe to the world," like if humanity is all of one thing, if we have like a shared humanity with each other, mm -hmm. like every action we do. And I'll point out again to kind of hammer home what I was saying before in in the drawing thing. Um, notice how. Hold on, let me put this tablet away. Oh my god, I'm all fucked up. How, how have I done this? I can't believe you've done this. I can't believe you've done this. So, 
Remember when I said that we have uh, a few different decisions that we can make, and one of them is that we could choose to argue on the things that we're disagreeing on? A lot of the time in debates, we are choosing to focus on the thing that we disagree on, and that is what we are doing here. We're just going to keep focusing on the thing that we disagree on, um, and we're going to keep on doing that because we want to break her on that rather than get our foot in the door with, uh, you know, the thing that she already agrees with, uh, but okay. The act we take, every thought we think, every word we speak is spoken into this like interwoven fabric of all of humankind. We don't like live in forests and eat from a tree and like don't interact with each other, right? Every action we do is necessarily us like, you know, dotting an eye, crossing a tree on the, on the pages of humanity. We're all contributing to this in some way, size, shape, or form. And we're contributing from it, we're taking from it at the same time. All of us are, necessarily. No, unless you literally are like the, um, oh god, the, um, oh god, the bomber who lived in the the Unabomber? Yeah, the Unabomber. Ted Kuczynski, is that the guy's name? I think he like lived in a forest. Unless you're that guy, right? All of us are constantly taking from, giving back to, interacting with humanity in some way. There's this collective human spirit, right? Mm -hmm. If you are such a person that has a thing that you do exceedingly well, as taking from- And now he's just gonna repeat himself again. Um, now it's not Brittany making this conversation boring, it's Steven. From and being part of that human spirit. You have the ability to give back to it. I think you should. That's all I'm saying. But I think yeah. I'm restating myself. I understand. So yep. I can understand your disagreement with that, right? Like the idea that there's an obligation for you to like give back to other people in ways that you might not know how to do, you might not be appreciated for, it, it might even be a detriment to you. Like that is a burden to some extent. I acknowledge that. And I can see why it would be unattractive or unappealing. I get that too. It feels like the callers, the demand, I take their call. Like I'll get emails from people that said, hey, you need to boot someone off your call list so I can get on. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because I need to talk to you. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? They're like, you're the only person who can help me. And I was like, you sound crazy. Mm -hmm. It sounds and, and notice how if we go back to our drawing here, remember how I said you could mention A as a thing that is the reason why you feel good about the X thing that I'm talking about. Now we have the opposite happening here where she is saying, oh, you know, and uh, in C is the reason why. Ooh, why is that fucked? Because um, on the wrong layer. C is the reason why I feel bad about this point that you're talking about. Uh, whoops. Um, over here, okay, because of C. So she's feeling that because of C. Um, I don't know if I need to keep making this point to you guys. I don't think it's important. I think you already understand what I'm talking about. Um, but They're saying, well, you have this talent and I need your particular set of skills, Liam Neeson. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm busy because I'm full up. So at what point are you supposed to feel guilty? I assume never because it doesn't work within my values or shame because you betrayed your value and within your community of being a presence there that you could be helpful. Like I'm super helpful. I have a whole community of people that rely on me that can call me, that can call me at 2 a.m. and I will come get you. Mm -hmm. But I have a limit to how I can interact with that world. Sure. So the reason I do calls or I'm really active on my Discord is like I'm trying to be active in my local community and then I do that in my physical local community, right? Mm -hmm. Yet you, who wants to impact the world in such a way is still making it so you are not physically interacting with the world, right? You're still only having a very distanced relationship with it, I assume, but you want to impact it on a larger scale. But I actually yeah. think local and small works better. That's why I think like, if I impact five people, way better than a thousand, because those thousand... Well I, so you know, I just I, I just happen to work on a large scale because of my position. That's it. It's, right. it's not. Be, I don't think everybody needs to be interact. Like I think local sales are almost always going to be better actually. Um, because when you say your position, you mean on YouTube? Yeah, like on YouTube as a streamer. Like obviously I've got I'm reaching out to more people than I would as like an individual normally, right? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. uh, and and continuing on that topic, like when I see this, she's busting out of only talking about herself, only talking about her. I I like this. This could be good, right? Um, and it's new. And she she's talking about more than just her and six feet away from her. Th this is much more than just her bubble or, or her like personal bubble. I, I hate the way she talks about stuff. I'm, I'm not going to use those words. Um, so this could be a foot in the door because it's a change from just caring about herself. Um, and then let's let's see what Steven says. Um, I guess I understand the wanting to bridge gaps like you did really good on fresh and fit you were like I think I'd be really nervous and I'd be sweating the whole time uh -huh. So if you guys bring me on that panel, just know that I'll be nervous But I think that that's that's really a skill you have that I uh -huh. don't have sure And I think it's really lovely to see you do that uh -huh. um, Do you think you'll get bored because I feel like that's what you've been doing for a long time? No, I think I've gotten better. And I think I've gotten better and better at it um, okay. It's something that I'm continuing to improve as a skill uh, and then also I want to be clear um, 
when I say humanity demands of you some kind of like um, contribution back to it, humanity is a lot different than a human. I don't think a human can demand uh. anything of you. When I speak about humanity, I'm talking about this like collective fabric of mankind, not like some individual saying, you need to fucking. And again, he's resolving like disagreements rather than, rather than trying to build anything, but that's fine. We all have our different ways of having conversations. Um, ah, this all fits under the same thing. I'll put it there. Take my fucking call, Brittany, blah, 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 right? So, like, the demand that humanity might have on you is that, like, you can have calls with people, and because you're able to, you ought to do that. You ought to pursue that as a thing. But that doesn't mean that some individual can be like, you need to talk to me right now, or blah, 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 right? Like, it's contribute in the ways that you can that, like, it, you know, isn't a huge detriment to yourself or something at the same time, you know? Yeah, I guess I, I I do accept that people are going to individually make their own decisions, and mm -hmm. I, I believe people conscientiously choose most of their life paths. So I, I like the idea of yours. It feels... Can I, I want to, I'm going to say it like this, but take it with a grain of salt. Sure. This is just my gut. This is, good, could be yeah. so off. I'm like such a, oh my God. Okay. Mm -hmm. It feels like two possible feelings, desperate, grasping at something that brings a foundation. Mm -hmm. And then it feels slightly performative. Okay. How do you like, but only because it feels shielded and maybe it's cause I don't know what's going on. And I don't know you personally like that. You know, maybe there's like a lot of reasons you're going down this path, Okay. but I think it's it, like it, it feels worrisome to me but only because i'm just like why are we doing this though like why this particular thinking of your like the humanity is this like big thing because it doesn't that just like fuel the no, no, like the neuroses and the craziness of the bubbles who are already like we have to save the world we have to save the world it sounds like very i think that those are all like very shallow engagements with the subject like i agree that there okay. are people that do that like i want to save the world blah 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 but like i'm not talking about saving the world I'm talking okay. about like all of these outward actions are coming from a lot of inward examination, right? If you're okay, really, 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 that, really yeah. good at music, maybe you owe it to, to, to humanity to pursue that talent. Maybe you ought to look at something there. Or if you're really good at like uh, therapy or if you're really good at driving buses, whatever, like like these are contributions that you can make to like all of humankind, like that's good. Uh, but you don't have like an obligation to like save the whales or save all the fish or whatever. It's just that like all of us have like different sets of skills and talents. Um, and I think we owe it to ourselves and the world around us to pursue those skills and talents. I think it would be a better place but if we all did it. I did grow up hearing that a lot in the Catholic bubble where they were like, this, you know, find the path that God like laid out for you. Mm -hmm. And so obviously I think I did find my purpose. Like I think I found my, where the universe quote unquote was going to send me, mm -hmm. whatever that means. Cause not that I exactly believe in fate, but I do think that I chose a path that best complemented my skill set, which is limited. <laughs> I don't have a lot of talents. I have like one or two set of skills that I'm. And, and here's another really positive thing about Brittany. Like Brittany works to tell you things that she agrees with you about right like some other people only focus on the disagreements like um like if i was doing like a formal review on this i think one interesting like thesis point to look at that i'll kind of put up here um Like, I think that if we were to go back and look, and this is a, a hypothesis that I have because I, I haven't looked through the whole thing to find this, I get the feeling that Stephen in this conversation is like focused on disagreements all of the time. And though she has some disagreements, right? Like she mentions things she doesn't like. I think she spends a lot more time talking about the things that she agrees with. Um, or she, she brings new things to the conversation, like this mentioning of her religious background, which is similar to what Stephen talked about and finding, you know, that the path that's laid out for her and that she did this, um, I'll, I'll just green this whole statement. Um, like she, she does that a lot more. And I think in general, that's, that's better to do. Um, but, uh, to each their own. I know Stephen's a debate guy. Um, Let's see here. Are, is the stream like dead? <laughs> I'm really into it right now, but I just, I want to know how is our stream doing? 
because I either you guys aren't chatting a lot or my because my stream chat breaks sometimes. It might just be that nobody is chatting, but if you are chatting, I don't see it. Oh yeah, no, I'm not seeing like it's fine and stuff. That's not in my in my chat window. Um, oh, it's oh no, you just sent that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, one second here. It's fine. I'm listening. Okay, I hear you. Um, just two seconds here. I just want to make sure one thing is okay. Um. um hold on. Let me respond to this real quick. Um, one second. I don't know what to say. I'll do that after stream. Okay. <laughs> one second. Okay. I'm back. I'm waiting for the chance to talk about how great weed is. <laughs> okay. Oh, look, everybody's chatting now. Okay, I just want to make sure, because if I don't see chats, then I, I worry that the restream chat isn't working. If you guys aren't chatting, that's totally fine. Um, okay. I've got D&D happening, so I'm just watching for Hot Girls Triple X. Steal your credit card dot com spam. Okay. I'm like, great, and I made a business off of that, and that's wonderful. Sure. But, um, and I hope... I usually focus on disagreements as well. I like how you broke down how you approach conversations. I tend to focus on concepts and don't really pay attention to how they feel. Damn. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind for the future. Cause I, I do think a lot of people, especially in this space operate the way that you do. Um, and I guess that the gap I have to bridge is like looking at like, are you often responding to the things that people feel bad about and disagree with you about? Or are you often spending the time? Like, are you spending the time on differences between the mental models that you're using and the points? Or are you spending a lot of time on, the similarities in the way that you're thinking and the points. Um, because I would say that you should probably use as a hammer all of your agreement things to try to get the disagreements in line. That's what I would say if you're only focused on that. But yeah, I think paying attention to how people feel is super duper important because that, that's going to indicate to you how likely it is you could get a point to change or, or get them to, to change the way they, they think about a point. Um, because they, oh man, if we go back to this, sometimes the reason people think that something is somewhere is because they remember something else that would normally go here. And they're like, well, this point to me looks like when my uncle raped my sister in band camp, like, oh fuck. Okay. Well, if you believe that point is there because your uncle raped your sister at band camp. I am not a therapist and it is unlikely I'm going to shake your view of that point belonging there. So I need to work with a separate model from my own that just assumes that that point needs to be there and then see what kind of picture I could draw beyond that. Uh, I, I, might, I may need to get creative because there's no fucking way I'm, I'm unpacking that baloney. Um, and uh, that's why feelings are important because sometimes you could miss something that tells you like, hey, focusing on this point here, probably not going to do you any good. So I would let that go because um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not something you're going to fix. Um. <laughs> but that I help people, but it's sort of now at this point like a, ben a bonus. Uh -huh. But you're right. I do think you should pursue. I actually like that part of hustle culture in Andrew Tate's bubble where Andrew Tate and Sneeko, no matter how you want to play it, at the end of it, you kind of feel motivated to get shit done. Uh -huh. But after an Ethan Klein like stream, you're like, I just want to be fat and useless, don't I? Uh -huh. Like there's really like a difference in the encouragement levels. So are you more like, are you going to try like optimism on? Is that what's happening? It's like more like be focused, be disciplined, find your talent. I mean, I've always been kind of like optimistic. Like, I don't think we should ever be like pessimist or hopeless. Like, that's a really boring and debilitating way to live through life or to go through life. Um, that's always something that like red pill and like right leaning ideologies have more. Is left leaning people always seem to be too caught up in like thinking that everything is doomer in the end and systemic yeah. oppression and injustice and white supremacy and uh, you know genocides and blah blah blah. And it's like we can't do anything. Okay, well fuck. Like, what a depressing fucking message. Why the fuck would anybody want to listen to you about anything? Like, Jesus Christ. Um, totally. 
but the uh, yeah, but right leaning people, um, even if some of their systemic analysis is fucking dog shit, um, their messages are way cooler. Go to the gym, yeah. get lifted, do this, make a family. You can make a change in your life. Blah blah blah. It's like, okay, cool. That sounds cool. I like that message more. That's a better message to sell on an individual level to somebody than um, than you know, like everything is hopeless and systemically fucked and everything. You know. 100%. It's actually why I think I'm really lucky to have been raised a conservative and then gone more progressive because I have it like in me. One of my I do both and I get an intuition on how they feel. I just don't systematize it the way you seem uh the way you seem you do. I would just feel it. Yeah, I think um Yeah, I think when you feel it, feelings are a lot like memory. They're very fleeting. Um which is why and they, they can change in ways that distorts what the past taught you. Um, like, like, for instance, if I hear from you, oh, I believe in blah, blah, blah for this reason. And I'm like, okay, that's a reasonable reason. Yeah, and I also believe in this crazier thing for this reason. Oh, okay. And I believe in this other crazy thing you don't believe in for this totally outlandish reason. It can be easy if you're only doing it emotionally and you're not systematizing it to then look back at the first two points and apply the craziness of the third. So like, oh, this person's fucking nuts. They believe in all the stupid shit they believe in because they believe in this stupid fucking thing I learned on point three, when that might not be the case. Because you didn't systematize it, you're not really able to weigh out that feeling versus the other feelings. And you could easily overwrite everything that you've learned with the new thing that you've learned that upsets you the most. So that's why like operating off of feelings alone can, it's a recipe for disaster. It's like, it's like trying to pass memory tests without like writing anything down or having a system like you kind of can only go so far because your mental RAM, like a computer's RAM, the random access memory that you're like keeping short term memories, it, it's really weak. Um, which is why like when I'm having conversations and stuff with people, I write everything down because it holds me accountable to remember what exactly had happened rather than overriding it with emotion. Because emotions, if you're not keeping track of them, they can get out of hand really, really quick. And then you, you lost all the wisdom that you that you gained at the beginning. Um, I feel like feelings are, are, are just feelings and not facts. Sure. That too. Former progressive friends mm -hmm. actually said that to me. She goes, you only know how to work within the patriarchy because you were raised as a boy. And I was like, Oh, well, I also am kind of smart, I guess. Like, damn, mm -hmm. give me some personal credit for my achievements. But she said that she's like, your like aggro way of being is why you've been successful. And I'm like, isn't that what Andrew Tate's saying? He's saying everyone is a pussy because all of you are denying like your your ability to be like strong, mm -hmm. make a statement and go for it. Mm -hmm. Like the internet's gonna come for you, the world's gonna come for you, and it really sucks. But like, you know, take a deep breath and keep going, which is hard, right? Mm -hmm. I know you never get quote unquote burned out, and I most certainly do at this job, but I I think balancing it out always goes back to going back to my family, going back to the things that I need as an individual separate from my job. Mm -hmm. Right? So I can be that 110%. Because I do think that I I mean, I think I have a lot of fun here and I think that I add to the world, but I'm not sure that that's a requirement for me to be present sure. in the world. And I think that that's, I think we all just learn, like look at Lav, like on her first journey into the world, you're just like watching her and you're like, oh, I wonder what she'll do with this. But like, she could go in so many directions because she's such a baby at it, like the streaming world. Sure. But she's open to oh, all shit, these- Oh shit, you guys had a huge fight, I remember this. <laughs> Wait, we only had the Didn't stream you? with you. Yeah, well you guys were- <laughs> But that's it. That was like the only interaction I've had with her yet yeah, until sure. we yeah. stream again. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. I just watched one video from her. So I don't even mm -hmm. know her literal history on the internet. Mm -hmm. But I know a little bit. But it's she's new. You can just tell versus you and I are established. Mm -hmm. But you are like you're on a new trajectory. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. There's something interesting about I've been, it. I mean, I've, I've done this a few times. It's kind of like the journey of my life. So, yeah. It's like, a, yeah, which we all do. I mean, go back and watch my career. I've changed a, bu a billion times. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, very interested to see what you end up doing with your time. I wonder how much is that sense of like, I guess I'm gonna put like an honor word on it. Like I'm gonna do my best. How much does that really filter in through the rest of your life? Is it easiest doing it with work? Um, It's easiest with work, yeah, of course, because work is easy. Personal stuff is way harder. <laughs> Like managing stream and everything is way easier than managing like your personal relationships. So I try to apply the things that I believe like through all areas of my life. But um, yeah, I mean, 
I would say stream is easier than personal relationships. Would you? Or no? Is it the opposite? Yeah. Of you? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Because personal. Well, the thing with the personal relationships is like it's real fucking life. Like it's really gonna mm -hmm. matter to the rest of my life, right? Mm -hmm. Though of course it matters more. And it's people whose opinions you have to care about. I don't give a fuck what my stream thinks about me. If they think right. something is cringe or whatever, but like I do care what Melita thinks about me. That's really important. Arguably the most important person's opinion in my life is over my son. You know. So yeah. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, totally. it's, it's a lot no. different. Yeah. Well, that's why it's so hard to like, uh, especially as a streamer, like letting people into your life. Like I've had. I will say, recently, the way he's been responding to how people talk about him on the Reddit, it does seem like he does care to some extent what people think, enough to ban them and then take all the optical nonsense that comes with that bit. Who am I? I had this struggle a lot online where <clears throat> I make friends through the internet because, mm -hmm. like, that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. But I've realized I need friends who are not going to make their problems my problems. Like, I don't, I have enough close friends. I have my inner circle. I have everyone I need in my life. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I want to keep meeting new people who are cool, but I want to have, like, more adult relationships. Like, have you ever had this ha Like, is this something that you think about where we're just adults and we're talking? We don't need, I don't need to know, okay? We don't need to get into each other's business. You can be friends with Nick. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. Doesn't mean much. Like, but for some people, they're like, this means everything. And I'm like, it doesn't. Like, it doesn't. You, you don't have to, like, be like, I'm friends with Britney, so this means something. It doesn't mean anything. Do you feel that way or no? Do you feel like the people you call friends mean something? Like, they're Are you talking about like just having like a casual, like almost like a work friend where you're like, what's up? How you doing? And you like chat and like, that's Yeah, but it? we're YouTubers, so- No, no, I understand. I don't mean like, I mean like a, like a work work friend. Like you, like you go to a restaurant and there's like, I'm just gonna go there. What am I? There was a there was a weird way that I looked at the world before where you had like um, you got like your work life your personal life your school life and it's always nice that there was like a separation between these things for me yeah. because if I ever had problems at one it didn't carry over to another generally um, yeah. so like if I've had if like shit is happening at home and I'm rough at school I go to fucking work and unplug my brain and you've got like Jeremy and Samantha are there and you're like oh what's up guys how you doing oh cool you know what's going on there might be like a little bit of like oh I got to fight with a girlfriend oh damn that sucks cool and then like that's it but it's not like you're, it's not like ultra heavy time where we're gonna go to the couch and like really dump on each other's feelings and right. grab some drugs and get right. like, so, yeah it's just like chill stuff yeah right. no those are fun relationships to have for sure easy relationships yeah. to have yeah that, okay so i look at those relationships and then i look at the world like how obligated am i to the world well what kind of friends are we mm -hmm. that's how i look at the world and i look at my friends well like what like look at it she, she fucking beautiful because now we understand better she just adds shit like off the fucking cusp that could help us like it, he doesn't use it it fucking frustrates me we'll see if he uses this she just gives this shit that's so good. Am I to the world? Well, what kind of friends are we? <laughs> like, do you see what I'm saying? She takes this obligation to the world that Steven is mentioning over and over and over again, right? And then she says that it's based on what kind of friends we are. She adds something new. Like... She just constantly does this. Um, she's like begging him to agree. When you look at it the way that I do, it can look like that. Um, but like, she isn't really um, trying to get him to agree with her. It's just like how she talks. She just keeps giving us more stuff and she's looping it back to what we've said before. Like for the for the conversation style I engage in, she is one of the, probably would be one of the easiest people to like talk to and arrive at agreement and disagreement about different things and resolve disagreement because she, she just constantly gives us this and it's just, it's not capitalized on. Um, and granted his, his goal in this conversation might not be to, but it, it's just, um, like we could, we could bridge these two ideologies and I just think it would be good for her to have more of what Stephen believes. That's how I look at the world and I look at my friends, well, like what's our obligation to one another? Sure. Because I'd like minimal with the whole world, but then maximum with my local community because I'd like to be a participant if possible sure. in my local community. So I guess I'm just trying to like understand your, you feel very like big, like you're trying to go big. And I'm like, that's interesting. That sounds difficult. Like Daily Wire is big. That's a big. Yeah, comparison. but only because I have the capability to, right? Like. Right, you keep saying that. Yeah, like, if I was a different you? person, I mean, I think I'm... I know you do with clout, I'm, I, with mm -hmm. views. I'm saying, do you, Steven, the human? I, I, there's only one way to know, right? Yeah, amen. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah, you have to try. It could be that I try and I fail. I'm like, okay, this, like, <laughs> back to League of Legends. We're going for Diamond 1, baby. Okay, f*** all this shit. <laughs> uh, maybe, who knows? Yeah. But, like, yeah. I, like, obviously, you know, it's always said a million times and everybody knows to be true. Like, you know, it's better to try and fail than to not try it all and wonder what if, right? 100. Yeah. Totally. No, um, Dead ass. my hustle brain is like, let's go, baby. Exactly. Let's go try it. No, you have to. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, I really, really hope it works out. I think you said you're going to do, like, a podcast or something with Kyla, with Erudite? Yeah, I'm working on that. Her, she's flying down with her husband. 
Oh no, now we're just going something else. I yearn. I yearn for them bridging this shit, dude. You know, there's this thing on Reddit um, where you have like unsatisfying gifts, like gifts or videos where like it, something almost like, like a golf ball almost falls into the hole or like there's a pen that's like just the right shape to like go in a piece of cheddar cheese and instead you keep sticking it in like the smaller holes and like destroying the cheese or like you have like i like it's like you destroy what could have been really aesthetically pleasing um and then it becomes like the opposite and it's like cringy um that's how i feel with this stuff is like oh 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 i'm edging and then it's taken away from me <laughs> and they were going back and forth it was going so so good like here, it, we we could have gone somewhere from here and we didn't. Like, build on this idea, and instead we go to a different topic. Um, oh, thank God, we're near the end of this uh, of this video. Been in a day or two, we're gonna do the fresh and fit thing. I'm going on no jumper. I think tomorrow or the day after tomorrow oh, or something. Oh, fun. Okay, great. And then uh, I'm doing a change my mind event uh, next month between two or three Texas college campuses. So that'll be fun. When I know that for sure, I'll advertise that so people can come and kill me or something, whatever they want to do in real life. Yeah. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Okay, perfect. No jumper. That's gonna be interesting. I haven't seen much of them, but I know obviously who they are. Mm -hmm. See, different bubbles. Like they're very famous, quote unquote. But like, I don't really fuck with outside of the internet too much. But I know. Is that Adam? Is that Bridge? His what? Why? I'm so confused. Did you just join? I'm going to ask that first because it will impact the way that I engage with you. Um, like the people that take a bite out of the whole Kit Kat rather than just a single bar. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a good example of exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yes. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, and, and the reason I ask you that, Drear, is because, yeah, yeah. So you, have you been here the whole time or have you not? It's not. Um, Cause if you've been here the whole time, I will handle you differently than if you autoplay sent me here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So we're at the end of this conversation. It's over. That's the end of the video. Um, we'll kind of go back through what I've talked about here. So let's start with these. Um, first of all, if you have the question about, no, I'm not going to go through that, uh, the, the Nazi thing. Um, I, I'm saying that Brittany gives us... No, hold on. <laughs> this is the best way of doing it, okay? Um, let me make sure everything is in frame. Actually, I'll go to my, my art thing. So to TLDR it, um, what I think in regards to what Stephen thinks, Stephen thinks that if you have the capability of doing something, you should do that thing uh, because you're uniquely able to do it. I think that if you can do something that few people do or are willing to do, the value of that good thing you do is increased a lot more. So if a lot of people do a good thing, the value goes down. Like, holding a door open for somebody or not littering, right? Most people aren't littering in most places. So not littering uh, kind of has lower value because everybody is doing it. Whereas if very few people are doing the good thing, the value goes up like being a vegan. We all know that we probably have to move away from factory farming in meat for a gazillion different reasons, ethical, moral, climate change, you know, so, and few people are doing it. So if you make the decision to be a vegan, that is a good thing that few people are doing and therefore the value of it goes up. If you're in a society where everybody is vegan, even if it's a good thing, it's kind of less valuable because everybody is doing it. Um, or if we compare being like a pro civil rights person today for black folk it's probably less valuable than when MLK was doing his speeches and stuff. Because when he was doing his speeches and stuff, we're in a different environment where very few people are doing it and somebody has to step up to the plate and it's going to be much more difficult for them to do it. And the FBI killed him. 
Um, so, you know, rough. Einstein, if you have a good brain that is capable of doing something that few people at the time are able to do, it is way good for you to do the thing. This is like Stephen's version that he's talking about. If you have a capability that few people have, you have a responsibility then um, to do the thing that few people could do. Um, and so that that's a bit of what is going on in this conversation. Beyond that, and th this is getting at your question, we talked a little bit about how do I parse this statement? How do I view conversation? What am I talking about with bridging? If I say thing X, Y, Z, and blue is my thing, and I like it, and I think it's good, and we're listening to somebody else talk about that, um, they say X, Y, Z, yeah, I feel A. I feel bad about that. That's why this is red. And I believe that in ABC, and that's their unique thing that they just brought up, and they feel B, which is blue, which is good about that thing. Like, okay, so they feel bad about the whole statement that I gave. They feel good about the whole statement they gave. None of these variables are the same, so I don't really have anything to go off of here. Let me keep listing. They say that X, they feel good about for a reason. Okay, cool. So now I know that X is something that's good, and they feel good about it in the same way they feel about their thing. And it's for a reason. So now I have some stuff in my toolbox I can work with. I can use point A and point X and their agreement of those two things to kind of have a foot in the door to talk about more of what we agree with or maybe move them to understand why agreeing with X should lead to agreeing with Y. Um, and they say Y, I feel C about. C is a unique thing. It's weird. It's not good or bad. I don't understand it. So that's why it's this color. And then finally, they they say for Z, I feel bad about it. I feel red about it. And I feel that way because of C, which is the thing that we don't really understand super well. So now we have a few different options. We can use the points of agreement, these blue things, to talk about that point of agreement. That's one option that I have. I could look at Z, the thing that they disagree with, that they feel bad about for C reason, and we could talk about the disagreement. We could argue about that. Or alternatively, we could focus on C and Y to explore the unique thing that we that I don't really understand. And these are kind of the three options you have with this bit of text that the person has given you. Um, the way I break down text or, or speech is I look at the points people are making and the sentiment they have around those points, and then I make a decision based on that. Debate people often go for argue. They find the things that they disagree about, and then they choose to talk about the disagreement, which Stephen does throughout this conversation. I prefer to use Agreement. I like to focus on the things that we both agree about, build out from there as far as I can to understand how much we agree on about something, and then leverage the agreements that we have to slip in more stuff that they might otherwise argue with or disagree with, or they they quite they haven't quite figured out their feelings about it. That that's my strategy. Other people will use argument, things you disagree about, and arguments you win to leverage why you should agree with them. Well, if you believe this thing and this thing was wrong, you should reconsider this other thing, right? Um, and then alternatively, some people, and I think Brittany fits into this quite a bit, um, like to explore in a conversation. They like to ask questions they don't know the answer to and talk about things that perhaps the other person hasn't explored because they just want to have fun in the conversation and learn. Um, and I also talk about how if these dots here are like, stars in the night sky that we're looking at. We're drawing constellations between them. If I'm looking at it from this angle, I might see this constellation and that's how I would draw them out. Maybe I think it's a very, very small triangle from my point of view. From your point of view, on the other side of the galaxy, looking at the stars, you see a completely different image with the exact same points because the angle from when you, where you're at, it looks like a really, really long triangle, like an isosceles triangle that stretches way far out. And so we have to rectify the difference in how we put together these same points, the same experience of the world, based on our different perspectives on those points that exist as fact. 
And there might be reasons why you can't change your opinion of where a star is located because of this dotted thing here, this thing you've inserted that doesn't exist in the world. Maybe you had a bad experience about a person and I can't change that experience. I haven't had that experience. And you're adding that to figure out how you feel about the thing. Like we use, for example, like maybe you know that person A raped your friend B. And that's why you think person A is a bad person. Therefore, they have bad ideas and they're going to lead to bad outcomes because racists are, or rapists are awful people that will always lead to awful things. Like, okay, I'm not arguing you out of believing this person's a rapist. So I have to use this point no matter what and keep that in mind. You have a sentiment about something. There's no fucking way I'm changing. And it's based on information I don't have access to that doesn't factor into my model when I first looked at it. And then I have to use that as a pivot point to understand what's possible, given that this star has to be in this location no matter what, even if that's shifted over from what I initially believed. So maybe I can still relate these two stars, but I can never relate this star here to these stars here because the point is different in space and you're never going to concede on that. So I have to start knowing that this thing has moved over to the right. Um, and th this is how I look at conversation. If we look back at the way that this conversation played out, we could see that Stephen will focus over and over and over on the parts that she says that she doesn't like. Um, so, and he'll keep repeating the thing that she doesn't like rather than using points where they have the same exact variable. For instance, early in the conversation, my strategy, they're talking about, he's talking about how utilizing your abilities gives you fulfillment. And he also says that you can, you can be reductively hedonistic to understand how something that benefits society could also benefit yourself, right? And then this is never, ever, ever brought up again, ever. Even though this is something they both agree on that connects to different points that they both have that has a positive sentiment that could have been used to bridge a gap in the conversation. To, and by bridging the gap, I mean they both can see that they agree on where one of these points exists in the sky. And then they can build out a picture that they both share from that point, but he doesn't do that. And that's not really his approach to conversation, um, at least here, uh, because we see fulfill go again, uh, repeat again when she says, why externalize your internal conclusions? That's what she doesn't understand. Externalizing meaning talking about like, you know, your internal conclusions going out to the world, whatever she says, it would make sense, which is a positive thing. It's green. If it's to fulfill your ego, and fulfill comes up again, just as it did in the first part of the conversation here. So we, we now know, based on the repetition, fulfillment is a foot in the door that makes sense for her that we can use to explain why you would do something to the benefit of the world, right? Because it'll fulfill your ego. It'll be something that helps from a hedonistic level, your first person perspective of what you like and don't like, right? And that's how we have to sell it to her. It's very, very clear. Um, and she says she cares about her puddle um, and, and, and whatever. Or he uses this as a way to, to connect, which is good. Um, but it, it, and she agrees that, like, I view people as bubbles and the communities they're in as bubbles. And sure, those bubbles probably overlap. I would agree. And if they overlap, then just like in his explanation here, if you view everybody in a big lake instead of as separate puddles, a drop in that lake, however small, will impact everybody in the lake, which she agreed with. Um, but then she says, I don't think it matters in a way that fulfills me as a person, right? Sure, I don't, I don't disagree it'll impact everybody. I just don't know why I would care about it impacting everybody because I care about what impacts me and fulfills me. Wonderful. We've now repeated this like three or four times. If we can get the fulfillment, if we can sell her on how fulfilling it would be to consider other people for her as an individual person, then we can sell her our idea of being the best person you could be for society because benefiting society hedonistically, you could break it down to see how that fulfills you as a person. Um, 
And instead, he repeats what he said before about, yeah, you know, if I streamed every day and did that, that's fine. Uh, but if I dedicate myself to music, it could make life richer for everybody. And he just repeats himself over again. And then she repeats herself saying, I don't like this owe it to the world thing that you keep bringing up over and over and over again. That's the part that I disagree with. I don't like the idea of, uh, you know, um, doing something that, that, that benefits the world. I don't see why we have to externalize it that way. That's not something I care about. I care about my six foot radius. I care about what fulfills me as a person. And uh, then Destiny says, if every person did hedonism, it would suck, which she agrees with. Great. So every person doing hedonism certainly would suck. Where do we go from here? How are we bridging a gap? How are we using this in a productive way? Then he says, if every person did the best they can, the world is a richer place. She doesn't like this owe it to the world thing, but he's going to keep bringing it up. Is there an imperative synergistic bond? Is there an imperative? Ought we, which is something she doesn't like. Is there a synergistic bond to push ourselves to do the best? Is morally virtuous. We ought to pursue that thing. He just keeps repeating the shit that she doesn't like without really addressing it or like bridging that. And then she repeats again, I don't like the idea that the world is the motivator. Maybe some are externally motivated, right? Um, but she isn't, right? I like the idea of being your best version with less weed and masturbation. That's her personal thing. And best version, her individual, right? We know where we can go. We have to sell this to her as why as an individual it's good for you. The hedonistic, uh, you know, breakdown that we said we could do, yet we never do. Um... And what does he choose to do? Given that we know we can go on fulfillment and we know where we can go to fix it, he focuses on what we disagree on. When I say owe it to the world, which she had a problem with, we speak into interwoven fabric of society, which is something he already explained with this here about the puddles versus a lake. Um, every action is a mark contributing to the book of humanity. Again, we're just using another analogy to explain the exact same thing that she already agreed with without doing anything with that explanation that we already have agreement on. I understand your note of it being a burden. And then we go nowhere. And then she talks more about what she doesn't like. It feels like demanding callers. Okay. That's easy to dismiss and then go on something else. But what do we do? We focus on humanity is different from a single human and he focuses on the disagreement yet again. So Stephen's focus is always on the thing that she disagrees about rather than the parts where she says she does agree in building on that. And that's a frustrating thing to me because I think bridges are built where we talk about the things that we can both agree on and then figure how far that goes than it is to talk about the disagreements and to try to diffuse them. That's just my personal approach. And that's why listening to this conversation go over and over again, constantly edging to this point where we have a really good in to try and pivot from the thing we both agree about to more that we could agree about. Every time we get there, Either the conversation stops or it goes to a different topic or then we focus on something we disagree on. And uh, it's not for lack of her trying because throughout this conversation, she constantly introduces new material like saying, I interact with my local community. So talking about more than just her, right? Oh, now we know more. Now we know it's not just that she cares about her and her ego. She cares about her friend, she cares about her local community. We have points like this added in here, which are brand new, which seem really close to what we're asking for. And then we do nothing. And then the conversation ends. Um, and it's frustrating to see that over and over again. Um, and that's kind of where I leave at this. Uh, oh, I didn't switch the screen the whole time. My bad. Oh, well, I don't care. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Um, I promise I'll get better at this one day. <laughs> do I even try to redo that? Um, she mentions fulfillment, right? Which is this color, which is our, our in that I was talking about. Reductively hedonistic comes up super early in the conversation. Um, 
and we just, we failed to do that. Fulfillment comes up again here. She says it makes sense if it's fulfilling your ego, right? Your personal. Um, he gets this really good thing with the puddle, expanding it to a lake and talking about bigger bubbles because we want to pull her away from individualism, get her to admit something about caring about a bigger community beyond her six foot radius and then build out from there. That would be my goal. It, he doesn't seem to accomplish that outside of this point here. Um, she basically just gives him things. He doesn't really get them out of her. Um, she mentions the fulfilling as a person thing again. Uh, she says she doesn't like the owe it to the world. And then he focuses on the, the world thing again. Um, and again, uh, he gets agreement on if every person did hedonism, it sucks, but he never brings that back to the thing at the very beginning about how it might not be helpful to be reductively hedonistic. There's just a lot of things he's not doing with what she tells him. He just repeats himself over and over and then focuses on the things she says that she disagrees with him about. Um, like she already said, she doesn't like the owe it to the world thing, but he keeps talking in those terms immediately after she already said that she doesn't like that. So where are we going with that? I don't know. Um, I don't like the idea that the world is a motivator. She's repeating herself from here. Um, though she does like the idea of being your best version, right? Going back to the ego thing, the personal thing. When I say owe it to the world, he focuses on on this negative part where she does, she disagrees. Um, and then she talks about demanding callers and then he focuses on that, the disagreement yet again, after she introduces new idea, that's super good about how she likes to interact with her local community. And she wants to impact small and local, which we could expand to get her to understand why you should care about the world at large. Um, you know, and, and she just keeps doing that. She keeps connecting ideas he said before to things that she agrees with and then nothing. And we just shift fucking topics. And it, it just keeps happening over and over again. Um, like here we get a huge thing. Her obligation to the world is based on what kind of friends we are. She wants minimal with the world and maximum with the community of friends. We could have done something to bridge this gap between the world is just made up of lots of people that either are your friends or could be your friends or whatever, and we just don't. And then the conversation ends. Um, and that just kept happening over and over and over. Ayo, the algo gods are promoting the stream, so you got to be doing something right. Well, yeah, I guess so. Um, so that's all of that. Um, we went through the whole conversation today, which I'm really proud of. If you like this note taking software, it's called notion. You can get it for free. Just look up notion.io. Um, I love it for organizing my stuff. If you joined the stream today because of the algorithm and you don't know what I'm about, these are my guiding principles. When I review conversations, which is what I do a lot of, I give communication advice. I think that we need to improve and promote communication. We need to be specific limit ambiguity in shorthand. So if you dislike something, don't call it retarded. If you think that somebody is overly focused on details to the detriment of missing the larger picture, don't say they're autistic. If somebody wrote something really long that you feel like could be short and you don't want to read it, don't call it a schizo post, right? We have intellectual shorthand that hurts our ability to communicate. And that, that's the sub point there. I want to improve and promote listening. I think most of us are much worse at listening than we are at talking. So more of our effort and our focus in the conversation should be on covering for our weakness, which is going to be listening. And to promote good listening, I personally take a lot of notes. I try to break down what people are saying in a way that I can understand it. I try to write down the things that they repeat so I could communicate back to them in a way that demonstrates that I'm listening to them. Um, and I think part of listening is being charitable and fair within reason, right? You could be too charitable. I do that all the time. I'd rather be too charitable than be not charitable enough. I believe in a principle similar to the justice system. I would rather 5,000 guilty people get let free than one innocent person be found guilty. I like, that's my approach to life. Um, I, I, I try to hear chatters out and respond fairly because you guys are in here. You're taking the time to not only listen, but to write something in chat 
as it's happening. That's a big thing. So I try to take you guys seriously and handle you fairly and stay cool, which, you know, I, that's, that's really hard. <laughs> And you should also try to stay cool in a conversation. Otherwise, you're going to be poor at listening and communicating. Um, and with the reviews, I try to define and stay within a limited scope. So I'm not trying to focus on some other conversation they had or a tweet they did or some other irrelevant thing that's might be relevant, but it's not what we're talking about, right? I, I just try to stay within whatever it is that we're reviewing so we don't go out of scope and do a bunch of other shit. Um, it, for anybody that kind of has been keeping up on Destiny's Nick Nazi arc. Somebody asked at the beginning, and I think it's worth just keeping a note of this in my back pocket. Why does Destiny want to die on this hill of not calling Nick a Nazi? Three main things. One, he doesn't think that Nick is a Nazi, and he's not going to lie. So he, it's a big ask to ask him to lie. Steven's not the type of guy who's just going to lie about some shit he believes in. So if he doesn't believe Nick's a Nazi, it is a tall order to ask him to lie. Um, and, and here's an analogy I used is when you're having a, an argument with somebody, it's a lot like driving. When you're driving, a bad driver looks at the car in front of them. A good driver looks several cars in front. Because you need time to respond and to create a plan of action when things go wrong. And I feel like a lot of people are looking at the bumper of the car in front of them. They're really focused on calling Nick a Nazi, but they don't look several cars in front to see how important that thing is actually going to be. They're going to spend a lot of time and energy getting him to call Nick a Nazi, not realizing that at the end of all that, even if he does call Nick a Nazi, we're not going to accomplish what we really want to accomplish. Labels, he believes, are fundamentally unproductive, which is going to impact him not really caring about calling Nick a Nazi in the first place and making your job harder than it otherwise needs to be. He believes that other people have baggage with words and other people have different, often rudimentary definitions that makes the words worthless. So he's very against even spending time on a language discussion about labels. And for that reason, it's not going to be fun to have a conversation with him about labels, specifically about trying to label somebody in particular, some particular thing. And beyond all of that, three cars in front, you see a pile up on the freeway, an absolute stoppage that will require you to pump the brakes on this entire argument, which is he's not going to change his engagement with somebody, even if he believes that they're a Nazi. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you win on point one and make him think Nick is a Nazi because three cars ahead at point three, he says it's not going to really fundamentally change his engagement with them. He wants to focus on the points. That's all he cares about. These labels are silly. They don't work, right? They're fundamentally unproductive. They are antithetical to the kind of conversation he wants to have. They distract from talking about positions. You have several cars in front of the one in front of you that are stopping. And you have to realize you're going to have to pull the emergency brake on this entire approach you have to arguing with Steven because three cars in front, the whole freeway is stopped. Okay? Um, so that's that. That's basically what we've covered today on the stream. I hope you guys have had a good time. If that was really cool to you, if it was entertaining, if it is something that you feel was good and you want to see more of it, financially support the stream. That is the best way to guarantee that it continues to happen and increases in quality. I talked at the beginning of stream today about how I just landed a job. It's probationary for a month and then we'll see if they renew my contract and they, they hire me full time and whatever. Um, I'm going to really be focusing on doing a good job so that that will happen and my life will improve and I don't need to be focused on the stream as my main money making endeavor to help me live my life. If that happens, then the money from streaming that the stream makes will just go back into the stream. Because what I'm trying to do with the stream is improve and promote communication, improve and promote listening, and have some fun while doing it, right? We we, we talked earlier, and, and I, I showed you the drawing about the things that few people do that you know are good, 
are the things that are the most valuable to do. I think few people are trying to communicate effectively. I think few people are trying to listen effectively. And in the age of the internet, when we are so interconnected, what is a gift in the form of the internet can quickly become a curse. It will become a curse if we don't learn how to listen to each other, how to parse through garbage, and how to effectively communicate in such a way where people understand where we're coming from. So I want to promote that. I want to get better at that. And I want that to be thematically something that other people are going to care about, that other people are going to work on. Um, and and that's that's just something I'm going to to do and I'm going to continue to work at. We talked a little bit here about how Destiny's journey goes from bully to compassionate in the last one or two years to focusing on having empathy for other people. And I would like to think I was at least part of that. And whether I was or wasn't, I'm happy that the change has been made because that's what I preach for. And not in a Mr. Girl sort of way where we have empathy for the people that we can easily understand or that we've had the same experiences as or only to the extent that we believe that their experience that they're telling us is real. I don't mean that fake shit. I'm talking real empathy, really taking people at their word, really trying to understand them, stepping out of your frame of reference and assuming that you might be wrong about your interpretations of other people. You might be wrong about your interpretations of events and that's okay because we all are all the time and that's why the world is the way that it is, which is not as good as it could be if all of us improved on that skill and made a culture of getting better and better at that over time. And so that's what I'm trying to do with the stream and I'm happy that Steven's made that change. I'm happy other people are making that change and I'll continue to work at this to make that change for everybody. If you want to support that, that's amazing. That's what that money will go towards. Um, that's that. Good stuff. Best of luck. Have a good night, man. Yeah. All of you too. Um, have a good one. I'll talk to you all later. I hope it was a fun stream for you. It was for me. I made it all the way to the end without freaking the fuck out, which is good. And uh, it is four o'clock in the morning. So I will read the rest of my wonderful Dune book and then... I will go to sleep and start work in the morning. Wish me luck. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. See you later. Bye, 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 bye. I'll try not to get torn apart by bears. <laughs>